Candlestick Park is all dressed up and ready to host some college football as the 2011 season kicks off with two teams full of optimism. It's the Cal Bears and the Fresno State Bulldogs, and it's time to get getting. College football, and we come to you today from San Francisco's Candlestick Park, the one game home of the California Golden Bears, who today entertain the visitors from Fresno, the Fresno State Bulldogs. It's all presented by Coors Light. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, my partner once more, Mike Pulaski. And Mike, you and I spent a lot of time talking with both these coaches yesterday, and I thought it was interesting that they both had that same theme. I think we're pretty good. But I don't really know what we have until we roll it out there. Exactly. A lot of young guys, a lot of new faces, and practice is completely different than the game. In practice, you've got the red shirts on the quarterbacks, and the bullets aren't really flying. But when it's live and it's full contact, it's going to be a different thing, and these coaches are going to measure some players today. And, of course, new quarterbacks for both these teams. For California, Zach Maynard gets the call. A decision that Jeff Tefford made way back in the spring. Absolutely. The last several years, they've had quarterbacks at Cal who couldn't really get themselves out of trouble with their feet. This year, they choose Zach Maynard because he's a guy that can not only get out of trouble, but he can create with his feet as well as his arm. And Jeff liked the escapability. On the other side, he's going to have receivers to throw to, so he's going to have to use his arm. His brother, Keenan Allen, who was a freshman sensation last year for the Bears, started off strong and had a minor injury, but he was special in the open field with the football. This guy is a playmaker. Whenever he touches the ball on the field, and he'll be somebody to watch today. Yeah, I mean, both these teams actually are big play kinds of teams, and both their strengths may be at the wideout position. Let's talk about Fresno State, new quarterback for them too, but while it's a new quarterback, it's a familiar name. That's right. They're hoping that the genes carry on because Derek Carr is the younger brother of NFL first round pick David Carr who was so good with the Fresno State Bulldogs. Derek hopes to pick up and improve upon that tradition down with Fresno State. He's a kid that says I want it. He's better off at this position than his brother was David at this point in his career and he's a guy that they hope is going to be a special playmaker. It's that time of year of course where hope springs eternal. Both these teams come in here with high hopes. One of them's going to be not quite so happy about three and a half hours from now. It's Fresno State and California. Two teams potentially very good. First test of the season upcoming with the kickoff on the other side of this commercial break from Candlestick Park. We're coming back. Cal football on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you today by Frosted Brew Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. back to Candlestick Park. It's Fresno State and the California Golden Bears. And before the opening kickoff, it gives up to us a chance to introduce the third member of our broadcast team. You know me, love him. He's Dan Dibley. Dan. Thanks, Barry. Well, the ties between Jeff Tedford and this Fresno State program run deep, very deep. Just how deep? Well, 30 years back to when Tedford was a JC transfer, came there at quarterback for two years. He left with a career record for touchdowns and passing yardage. The MVP of the now-defunct California Bowl in 1982. After a career in Canada, he came back as a quarterback's coach and offensive coordinator. He spent six years in all there as a coach. We asked him before the game, guys, whether or not this game has extra motivation because it's Fresno State. He said he just wants his team to go out and play well here in the opener, although he did admit to keeping an eye on what Pat Hill has done over the years. He's impressed by it, and he does root for Fresno State, except when they play Cal, Barry. All right, thanks a lot, Dibs. Dibs will be with us all day. He got an interesting piece of mail, too, yeah, absolutely. Jeff Tedford got one of those classic fundraising letters from Fresno State, sending him out looking for money, addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Jeffrey Tedford, looking for money, inviting him to come out to the pregame tailgate. They wanted him to come and enjoy being a bulldog today. <laughs> I think he's going to enjoy beating a bulldog today is what he's going to try to do. Here's Pat Hill, and, and I have to admit, one of my absolute favorite guys. Oh, he is so down to earth. He, you know, he's a coach. As a player, I was a blue-collar guy. He's the kind of guy that you would love to play for. Talks to his guys. He's friends with his guys. But then he draws that line. He's still the head man, and he lets him know what he expects of him every day. Shapiro will kick it off for Fresno. Fresno, incidentally, won the toss, and they defer it, so they'll take the ball in the second half. Fresno will kick it off. 
and it'll be Andrew Shapiro who does the kicking to start things here at Candlestick Park. Sunny right now, but it gets cold in a big hurry. Edmund and Manuel will be the deep men for California with Edmund standing at the goal line. So both these coaches will get some answers over the next couple of hours. Both these teams are talented. Both these teams are young. Both these teams are strongest at the skill position. Both these teams can run. Both these teams get after the football. That's what makes this a compelling game. It, it very compelling game. And Fresno State would like nothing more than that. Knock off the Pac-12 school. Shapiro's kick about five yards deep, and Edmonds going to come out with it to the 10. Runs into his own man with the 15-yard line, and is dropped at the 16. Darren Smith down to make the tackle on special teams for the Bulldogs. Anderson Carpets, Cal starting offensive lineup now. Today's Golden Bears lineup brought to you by Anderson Carpet and Linoleum Sales, serving the Bay Area since 1954. Anderson Carpet and Linoleum Sales Company, a reputation you can stand on. So Zach Maynard's first snap. Mike, you and I talked to him yesterday. He said, I can't wait to take that first hit because they haven't let him be hit. So he says, I feel like a boxer. I want to take that first hit. Cefale behind him, and they put Cefale in motion. They go out of the gun. Flag is down. Maynard throws, and it's dropped by Cefale. Now we'll see about the penalty. That was a nervous first play, I would exactly. say. Exactly. Illegal formation. Offense. More than four men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And one of those classic first game deals, a new quarterback. You got a lot, we talked about it, a lot of young talent, a lot of new faces out there. You have to get your formation set first before you can run your plays. And the rest of the California Golden Bears starting lineup. Those are the skill position people will cap from the walk on at the fullback spot. This time the Bears go with three wideouts. They split the tight end Miller as well. Maynard, quick throw, and it's intercepted. Picked off by L.J. Jones, and the Bulldogs will be in business, and exactly the start that Zach Maynard would not have wanted. Looking for the quick hitch on the outside. Receiver and quarterback obviously not on the same page. Marvin Jones out there taking a one-step hitch. Maynard expecting him to run the full five yards, and instead that was just a giveaway. L.J. Jones with an easy interception. That's just a gift. An inauspicious start for the Bears, and the Bulldogs in business at the California 16-yard line. There's a look at Derek Carr. Carr was in a battle for the starting spot last year, and then Pat Hill opted to redshirt him. He said he could have played last year. He might have been the starter in the end. Played a little bit as a freshman. They go empty backfield on first down, and a quick hitch this time to Wiley, and Wiley's going to be stopped inside the 15 at about the 14, maybe the 13-yard line. For Fresno State offensively, four new members of the offensive line. Backs and receivers, Robbie Rouse, a good running back. Little guy, but he can run between the tackles. He's a north and south runner. Wiley, one of the faster guys. Saunders, their best wide out. And here's the offensive line, as we said. Bryce Harris is the only returning starter off that unit. And the next four are all question marks across the board. Fresno State starting off with that empty set on the first play, trying to see what Cal's defense is going to give him. This time, Rouse lines up in the Wildcat. And Rouse is going to keep it. He gets inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line. You know, you made a great point about Rouse. Pat Hill really emphasized yesterday he's a downhill guy. They talk about it all the time. He has to run downhill first. Yeah, I, I like what Pat Hill told They said, I just don't like lateral runners. Yeah, lateral runners doesn't make it. He said, it's okay five yards down the field. Right. <laughs> so the ball at the nine-yard line and a third down and a long three for the Bulldogs as you look at the Bears' defense. And it is a good defense. I think the hallmark, really, of this California team is their defense. I think if they're going to win, they're going to win with good defense. Second year under Clancy Pendergast. Third down play, and they give us to Rouse, and Rouse breaks a tackle. He's at the five. He's in. Touchdown, Bulldogs. We talked about the question mark being the offensive line for both teams. That time up front, the Bulldogs very good at picking up their blocks. 
and springing Rouse. And Rouse having great vision, hitting the hole straight on, but the backside opened up. You're going to see everybody try to wash, a kick out in the front, and then everybody washing this way. Rouse sees it, springs outside with some of that lateral movement we were just talking about, and finds the corner of the end zone. Well executed play, bounced off one tackle, took it in, three plays, 16 yards. And with the conversion by Gusling, the Bulldogs take a quick 7-0 lead, not yet two minutes into this opening game. So the Bears are stunned, and we're coming back. I mean, you get a gift right off the bat. Opening kickoff, you cover it very well. You get the interception. Things are going right for the Bulldogs right now. And Pat Hill, he's an emotional guy. He leads his team with emotion. So his guys, if they get cranked up, they get that momentum going. They can get downhill in a hurry. Bad news for the Pac-12 in Houston today as the Cougars of Houston beating UCLA 38-34, a game that really was not as close as the score would indicate. Yeah, and an interesting week for the Pac-12. You look at Cal versus Fresno State. You've got UCLA versus Houston. I mean, there, there are some games out there. Oregon, of course, tonight versus LSU. There's some big games for the Pac-12 this week. Oregon State right now getting all it wants from Sacramento State. Yeah. That game was tied at 21 when last we looked with eight minutes to play. Edmund and Sofele will be the deep men for California to receive this kick of Shapiro's. And you can see the Bulldogs will hold on this kick. The wind at Candlestick Park is always a factor. It's going to get worse later in the day. Yeah. But it's bad enough right now. You can't really well there. You can see the flag. That's what happens up at the top of the stadium. Down on the field. It's just brutal. It's all. Ball. It is swirling everywhere, and it's going 12 to 15 knots. Shapiro's kick, a low kick that's going to skip at the 15 and going to be picked up by Edmund at about the seven yard line. He's got a little room, gets back to the 30 and knocked out of bounds as he crossed the 30 yard line. A 25 yard return by Edmonds of a kick that might possibly have gone out of bounds, but he did the right thing by fielding it. Nice job by Edmund getting that ball on the sideline and then just a quick step in and out. You see, guys. Each guy has an assignment. Somebody has to seal a block. Somebody has to find a way. Shapiro finally there on the tackle at the end. But Edmund using his blocks properly and getting as much as he could off that run. So here's the California Golden Bears take two. Take one did not go at all the way Zach Maynard would have wanted. Incomplete pass and a penalty on that play and then an interception. And to give this time straight ahead to Sofile and so Fele, I beg your pardon, he gets it up to about the 39-yard line, a gain of about six. Nice job by the Golden Bears. You see people pushing, getting that move for Safele up front. You have to clear gaps. Jones on the tackle in the end for Fresno State. But you have to find a way up there as an offensive line to seal things off. You just want to give your running back a crease. And Safele is the kind of guy that if you give him a crease, he can get those four or five yards. This time an empty backfield, four wide receivers in the tight end split. So they spread the field beyond the numbers. Maynard, quick toss on the slant, threw it behind his intended receiver, Jones. A little bit nervous right now. You see his feet, he's patting the ball. He's doing things that tell you that he's not settled in the pocket. He missed that quick hitch. He misses a quick slant. Coach Tedford calling plays for him right now that's trying to help him get settled in, but he needs to find a rhythm. He needs to slow the game down in his mind because that's the only place that's happening too fast right now. So the Bears now looking at a third and a long three, almost four yards for a first down. They're going to the offset eye. High snap, Maynard pulls it down, Blitz is picked up, Maynard throws long, he's got Allen, catches made inside the 40-yard line at about the 38, there's a confidence boost. That'll settle you down in a hurry. You complete one downfield, even that one though, as it, as it hung there, went back after LJ Jones on the outside, but as it hangs out there as a quarterback, get a little anxiety until your guy finally picks it up. Nice job, brother to brother, for his first Cal connection. Gain of 24 on that play, and you can see the wind being a factor on that pass, too. It just held up. Good job of the O line picking up the blitz that time for California. This time Maynard goes under center, gives to Safele, and nothing to do it. He is absolutely cracked right at the line of scrimmage by Jeremiah Toma. And Kyle Knox in there at outside linebacker position, one of the athletic guys, just finding a way to plug up the hole, allowing Toma to make the play inside. But good push by that bulldog defensive line. I think it's fair to say, too, Mike, one of the question marks for California this year is the running back position. 
Well, you know, they've always had a guy coming back. You, you go from Marshawn Lynch to, you know, you've got Arrington, you've got Javid Best. This year, they don't have an established starter coming in. Empty backfield this time, and a dangerous pass is almost picked. It was led a little bit too much by Allen. Much too much juice on it, and that could have been a pick six. Jones defending. As a quarterback, you need to step to your throw and make it happen. And you have to take that extra beat of time. Right now, Zach Maynard is not taking that extra beat to make sure he delivers the ball accurately, especially on the quick passes. He's hurrying too much. If he takes just that extra, just a beat, it's not even a click, and then delivers the ball, he'll be much more accurate. Just one of four. Steps up again, throws, caught this time by Jones. That'll be a first down just inside the 33 or the 29-yard line, 28-yard line. And a fantastic play by Marvin Jones, that veteran wide receiver knowing exactly where the chains are. You see where he's looking for the chains. Jermaine Thomas on the push, finally out of bounds. But Jim Mahalchek, offensive line coach, just coming back for the Raiders. Now the offensive coordinator for the Bears. Likes what he's seeing when he gets time for his quarterback. You can see Maynard starting to settle down a little bit. Not there yet. Here's a sweep. Safele, good block. Safele at the 25-20 to the 15. Cuts inside to about the 12-yard line. And another California first down. Now those are the plays that Jim Mahalchek likes. Any offensive lineman, any guy who's been up front pushing people around loves the running play. Watch Will Cap on his block up front. Nice kick block. Clearing Safele. For an extra 12 yards downfield, but Mahalchek as an offensive line coach, that's what he loves when you run the ball hard and you clean up those holes. First down, Bears at the 12-yard line out of the I formation. Kovan Dabosky Johnson in the game for the first time comes out split to the left side. Play fake this time. Maynard rolls to his left as all day throws over the middle. Caught at about the five-yard line by Anthony Miller. Takes it to the four-yard line. That will be a catch. does a good job throwing on the run. I think he's especially comfortable on the run. That's the way you need to get him into this game to start. Little play action, but the Bears had to establish their running game for the play action to actually make sense. They work together. When you run the ball well, your play action will work well because you hold backers. If you're not running the ball well, then you might as well just go straight drop back. Kowalski Johnson remains in the ball game. They give to him straight ahead. Gets about a yard, not more. Really cracked. As he got just past the line of scrimmage, Terrence Dennis there on the stop had some help from Jeremiah Toma. The thing that Zach Maynard gives the Bears down here is that option look that they haven't had in years past. Dabosky Johnson looking for a hole and nothing there. Great job by that Fresno State linebacking crew to come in and plug the holes. There was no gap, nowhere for him to get through. But I was saying Maynard gives you that option play. He's a running quarterback who gives you more options on the goal line. Tenth play of the drive now. In motion this time comes Hagen. Give to Safele, nothing to do it. Safele stopped right about the line of scrimmage by Travis Brown. Brown, an all whack performer last year, one of the linebackers that the Bulldogs are looking to this year to be a leader. Now the Bears can get a first down without making a touchdown. They need about a yard and a half. And a big statement play right off. They need to get some momentum. They need to capture some of the flow in this game. Fourth down, about a yard and a half. Maynard, long count, give it to Cap. I don't know. It's going to be close. He, he got it on the second drive. He was met at the line of scrimmage, but as he spun, he kept his legs moving, kept his force going. Although he was doing it in reverse, he was gaining positive yardage. And it's another success story, too. Cap, the son, of course, of Joe and Jennifer Cap. Joe, the last California quarterback in a Rose Bowl game back in 1959. His wife, Jennifer, was a walk-on here at Cal. Now started. When I saw Joe the first time, his son got a start out there, and Joe was more nervous, I think, than when he played. I believe it. So first and goal inside the two-yard line now for the Bears. Pitch to Sofelli. Sofelli in easily. Touchdown, California. So Cap got the first down, and then he got a great block out in front. Another kickout block doing that thankless job at the fullback position. 
but gaining so much for the team. Watch Cap as he comes and makes this kick block. Cefele making the cut right inside. That's exactly how you draw it on the whiteboard. Tell you what, that was a big drive for Cap. He yeah. had two great, two key blocks to spring Cefele, including the one for the touchdown, and then picked up a fourth and short. And the try for point is blocked. And that, of course, has been an issue for California for the last couple of years. So we'll take a timeout as the Bears score, but still trail by a point, 7-6, Bulldogs. Welcome back to the Battle by the Bay at Candlestick. Fresno State leading 7-6. Cal unable to get the extra point because of a block kick. Should be no surprise. Fresno State the best in the country at blocking kicks, guys. 58 now since 2002. They get the PAT. Texas second in the country, but 13 blocks behind them. A dominant unit for the Bulldogs. We'll see if it ultimately is the deciding factor in this one, Barry. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dipsy. And that's the truth. That not only this year, not only last year, but as long as Pat Hill has been the head coach at Fresno State, they have been very good in that department. And he talked to us yesterday about coaching down with Dick Tomey at Arizona, another special teams guy. Special teams, such an important part of the game, and so many times it gets overlooked for offense and defense. But a block kick here, a block PAT there, oftentimes makes the difference in a game. So Tavecchio will kick it away. He'll be kicking to Isaiah Burst and Milton Knox. And a short kick will be handled by the up man and take it to the 30-yard line. Return of seven yards, but a very short kick by Tebeki, O'Reilly Barnes. Was the returner for seven yards. So Derek Carr now will operate from his own 30-yard line. He's only had three offensive snaps so far. <laughs> and a short field the first time. Let's see what he can do now that he has a lot of grass in front of him. Both these teams, we said, very capable of big plays. Quick toss this time to Evans, and Evans trying to get the outside, can't do it. Picked up about five. Well, join Cal football at AT&T Park this fall. It's presented by Bank of the West. Call 800-GO-BEARS or log on to calbears.com to get your tickets today. One of the things that's going to help Carr tremendously is the fact that he has so much speed at that wide-out position. Fresno State likes to throw the screen a lot anyway, but the key on that offense right now is to get the ball to the hands of the athletes. And they're going to do it through screens and through some quick passes, and that helps a young quarterback. Second down and about six for the Bulldogs. Flag down this time. Pass dropped right in the hands of the tight end, Bashma. But a flag is down. And this is a hot throw. You're going to see the dog, D.J. Holt, coming for the Bears. Illegal shift. Offense, number eight. Penalty is declined. Third down. When we talked to Pat Hill yesterday, he said if they bring pressure, the young quarterback has to see it and throw the hot, and our guys have to make the catches. That's how we'll keep them out of pressure. Well, the young quarterback saw it and delivered a perfect pass, but the receivers have to finish their end of the play as well, or else Cal is just going to keep bringing heat. Bears in a nickel defense now, and this is a formation they blitz out of a lot. Out of the gun, Carr. The Bears do come. They bring the house flag down. Carr throws and overthrows Evans. And now again, we'll see what the penalty is. DJ Campbell right in the face of Carr. Ball start. Offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Austin Wentworth, you're going to see him on that right side just a little bit early getting out. You're not allowed to do that. you got to stay in your stance. You know, I thought, again, though, a very poised play by Carr. Yeah, very good. Set in the pocket. You can see that he's actually very comfortable out there behind center, back in that pocket. He's a guy that keeps his eyes downfield. Tell me why the Bears would have accepted this penalty. Would have been fourth and six. Yeah, they blew it up before the snap ever happened. That's right. Here's a quick give to Ross, and in the backfield immediately was Michael Kendricks. And Kendricks is a guy who is going to be a playmaker for this Bears defense. You know, Mike Muhammad last year was a phenomenal linebacker for the Bears, but when we talked to Clancy Pendergrass, he said he believes that Kendricks makes this defense better playing that same position. 
good size, can run, and he's from Fresno. He knows Pat Hill, knows a lot of the players on his team. Very engaging guy. We had a chance to sit and talk with him a little bit yesterday. Six foot 240, and he runs a 4540. That is a menacing linebacker. High, twisting kick. And handled and dropped immediately. And I have to say, I'm not sure who that receiver was because he's number 49, and we don't have a number 49 anywhere. 7-6, Fresno State. Seven to six ball game, 707 left first period. The Oakland Athletics and the Seattle Mariners will close out their three-game series tomorrow on Comcast Sportsnet California. Coverage beginning at 12:30 with A's pregame live. That's followed by the game at one. A's baseball only on Comcast Sportsnet California. Oakland A's trying to get a sweep. They won today three to nothing. There's Michael Kendrick. We talked to him yesterday. Very animated guy, real team leader. A guy that the team is looking to this year to be a special player. Last year, Clancy was telling us how explosive he is. He showed up on the field. This year, they're expecting him to step up his game to the next level. And they expect him to definitely be an NFL player when he's done all said and done at Cal. Maynard this time throws, and they're going to say out of bounds. Pass intended for Bright Bryce McGovern. Got his hands on it, but just a little bit out of bounds. Nice ball. I believe Jermaine Thomas got a hand on it and just tipped it before it got in there. But good job. Maynard looking very comfortable when he's on the roll. When he's actually moving, he looks comfortable. He's been accurate with the ball. It's the quick stuff that's affected him so far. I think they need to start calling some plays, put him in that five-step position, or roll him out on play action to get him into this game. This time the Bears again spread the field. They put the tight end Hagen split to the far side. Empty backfield. Bulldogs come with a blitz. Maynard on low. It's through behind Jones. What a great catch by Jones. Now he breaks the tackle, gets the midfield to the 45-yard line. Great play by Marvin Jones. Making something out of nothing. Marvin Jones on the sideline. Just a quick out. This is the hot throw for Maynard. We talked about it earlier. He makes the hot throw. Jones breaks one tackle. Then LJ Jones comes in for one side and Green from the other trying to finish it off. But a great first move, spin move, and great awareness to keep his head in the game, to know that he still had that sideline to run. A gain of 21 on the play, and Mater now 4 of 8, 64 yards. It gives straight ahead to Safele this time, inside the 40 to about the 39. The Bears right now starting to get some push up front. And that's the look that, we, that we're seeing. That's part of the look they changed the offense for, that zone read on the outside with the quarterback who has legs is a dangerous, dangerous play in college football these days. You think back to Oregon, Coach Mahalchek likes letting his big guys run, and it used to be that you play with 10 guys. You had your offensive linemen, your running backs, your receivers, and your quarterback, which is kind of an afterthought in the running game. Well, now as he's part of the game, you're back to 11-man football. Maynard this time might be checking off for the first time. Second down about five. And a give again to Cefeli. And Cefeli pops it. He may be gone. 20 to the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, California. 34 yards for Issa Cefeli. Cefeli kept looking back because he couldn't believe he was so wide open. Nothing back there but green grass. If you are a pressure team, and Fresno State is a pressure team when you watch them on film, you live by the sword and you die by the sword. Everybody heading downhill. All you have to get is the one downfield block by Keenan Allen, and he got it, and he sprung his man. Try for point now, and this has been something of an adventure. Vecchio has it blocked again. Coming right up the middle once again. And I don't know if it's that Tavecchio is not getting the ball up or the O-line is just not doing its job. One of the two. Well, it's that A-gap. It's right over the center. Wickman's getting that big push. And Wickman actually an offensive lineman by position. Watch the blocking here for California on this run by Cefale. Great job clearing that first gap, but this is the big one. Keenan Allen with the cut downfield, clearing Cefale. 
And look at him looking back. He can't believe that there's nobody near him, but there was nobody within 10 yards once he got past that last block. Again, aggressive defense is good until you get a runner in that second level, and then you're in trouble. Great blocking at the point of attack, and then, of course, the block by Keenan Allen. And the Bears have been doing that with some consistency, doing a real nice job. Yeah, they're opening up holes to Fele, the benefactor of the big offensive lineman up front. But then special teams, which was such a key for Jeff Tedford in the offseason that he actually let Pete Alomar, our special teams coordinator, go. They have a new special teams coordinator, Coach Janik, this year. But Pete Alomar wound up in Fresno with Fresno State. So he is now going against his former team here and getting the better of a special teams battle. They are doing that. Just pressure right up front. And that ball just came off low. That That is, I mean, that ball wouldn't have cleared the center had he stood up right. straight. That's on the kicker. So once you see that side view, you can tell that ball's a little low. Now you can see where Burst is lined up. He's the deep man, and he's at the 11-yard line right now. So Tavecchio obviously kicking into a wind here. It's a swirling wind. Burst going to handle this at about the 8. It's the 15 to 20. And the first man to him got him. The Eight, first 18 yards on the return. I believe the first man to him was actually his own man. <laughs> Might have been. <laughs> Looking for a hole, his old man got blocked into him. Michael Kendricks, though, made, made sure he didn't go any further. So the Bulldogs start at the 25-yard line. Five forty still remaining here in the first period. This time, three wide receivers, Wiley in the slot. Single setback is Rouse. And this is Rouse, and Rouse pops it. Gets close to the first down across the 35-yard line. Michael Kendricks again on the stop with D.J. Campbell, but a pickup of about 10. Just a frontside power play by Fresno State. Nice job hitting the hole downfield. And Rouse, just a little cut back to him. And, and ever since that zone blocking scheme has come in, they allow the running backs to really use his eyes. He's doing a nice job of finding that backside seam. This time from under center. Carr going to put it up, throws deep, looking for Wiley, and it is incomplete. Good coverage that time by the Bears. Mark Anthony right there in coverage, but a perfect spot for Carr. If you're going to put it out there for your receiver, you put it where your guy can catch it or nobody can. Did a good job of putting some air underneath the ball and trying to let his man run down. But not, not quite enough balance. A little hand game going on, but the official's letting it play. I got to think, Mike, it's awfully tough to throw a deep pass with this wind. The trick in to throwing in wind is to be able to spin it. If you throw a tight spiral, you can make it happen. But if your ball's wobbly at all, then you're going to be in trouble. Quick pass this time to Wiley. Wiley makes the first man miss. Tried to cut to the outside and might have had some room, but lost his footing. And Anthony makes sure he didn't go any further. As it is a gain of about two. And that's one of those things where you look at it and you go, well, that's track guy. You know, some guys play very fast. Wiley is the fastest player in the history of Fresno State. He's a 4-2-5-40, which is world-class yeah. speed. But that's straight ahead. When we talked to Pat Hill, he told us that, that Jalen was actually his best receiver. He was his fastest guy out there. And he thought that he was the guy that was going to make the plays. Wiley needs to get his feet together, get him underneath him, if he's going to be a guy that's a football player, too. So a timeout being called. First timeout that we've had in this game. Four minutes and 34 seconds remaining to be played here in the ball game. Pac-10 having a rough time of it right now. The awesome. final that Oregon State game. Sac State winning it 29 to 28. Isn't it interesting that Mike Riley's teams can't seem to get going in September. In September. He is such a great coach in October and into November, but September is a little rough start for him. That's That one's particularly rough. Well, we talk about the new Pac-12. It's now divided into two divisions, the North and the South, aptly named, I think. In the North Division, the two Bay Area schools, the two Oregons and the two Washingtons. In the South Division, the two newcomers, Colorado and Utah, two Southern California schools, and the two Arizonas. 
I think that South Division is going to be very competitive yeah, this year. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think both of them are very good. You know, the North so good. Some teams that have been you know good for a while. Obviously, Oregon, Oregon State's been solid as we talked about. But the South is going to be tough too. Third down and eight. Bears come with a blitz, and it's the perfect play, but unable to hold on was Isaiah Burse. No telling how far he might have gone. That was right where the blitz came from. Yeah, perfect job of throwing that hot route, the swing by Carr. But that ball, you could see, came right out of the sun, and you could watch as the ball comes down to Burse's hands, the shadow comes right across his face mask. But it was a well-thrown ball. Should have been caught, but a tough catch in this sunlight. So just to uh, answer the question that we had earlier, number 49, who returned that last punt, is in fact Marvin Jones, who wears number one, but he changed his jersey, jersey for the punt returns. Because of all the double numbers, he has to change it for the punts. So he's going to let this one go, and we have solved that mystery, and uh, our sleuth is Dan Dibley. Dibs, Barry, I had to work very hard on the sideline to solve this case, but if you look at the front of his 49 jersey, it's a pretty janky, old-looking Cal jersey. It's not your standard <laughs> golden bear blue, and I did even further investigation looking at the tiny decal on the back of his helmet. It is number one. It is Marvin Jones. Don't let the smooth 49 fool you because they have two number ones on kick return. Somebody had to give it up, and Marvin was the guy. What a good guy. At a broadcaster's nightmare. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> Personal foul on that last punt called against Cameron Krebs. You know, the reason for it is so many kids coming out of high school want to make sure that they get their number. And so that's a part of recruiting these days with kids. They want to have their number. You didn't used to see as many double jerseys, but now with recruiting being what it is and the arms race of recruiting around the country, if a guy wants number one, then you're going to get him number one to make sure he gets there as long as you have one on offense and one on defense. But it makes the equipment guy have to work overtime. Yeah, it does. So the Bears are back all the way up to about the eight-yard line now, and they give to Cefeli on first down, and he stopped just as he got started. Stacked up by Kyle Knox with a lot of help from his friends. A little counter action inside, and the way that you shut down counter action because you have a lot of crossing linemen behind the line of scrimmage is you get penetration on that defensive line. That time Fresno State did a nice job of getting upfield, penetrating into the offensive backfield, and that just shut the counter action down. Two tight ends for the Bears this time. They go out of the eye formation. And Maynard on the keep, but he's got some room. He's to 10, the 15 to 20, to the 25, and stepped out of bounds. Short of the 25-yard line at about the 23. And a flag is down. Gain of 15, but a flag down at about the 11-yard line, and this one may be coming back. Number 72, 10-yard penalty, still second out. Mitchell Schwartz, the on, guilty party. On the backside, trying to get that seal block. But this is why Zach Maynard got the quarterbacking spot in the spring. Those legs were what set him apart from the other guys. He can throw the football, but his escapability and his ability to make plays with his feet is why he earned that spot. And that's what Jeff Tedford expects to see out of him. That zone option read has become so big and, and such a big part of that Pac-12 look with Oregon running it, now Cal running it. You see some of it in other schools. You have to have it. Cefeli gets about two, maybe three. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down to 10. Toma again on the stop for the Bulldogs. You can see Zach Maynard kind of settling into this game. Yeah, and you made the point when we talked to him yesterday. He's a guy that wants to get hit. He wants to get the blood flowing. He wants to get the nerves off with contact. Throwing passes and being accurate is what everybody thinks it takes for a quarterback to get started. Sometimes you want to get your head wrapped. Well, I think he's already done that. Yes. <laughs> That part's done. Here's Jones to the near side, Allen to the far side, Kowalski Johnson, the lone setback, two tight ends. Maynard gonna go up. Throws for Allen. Great grab at the 40 yard line. Brother to brother. 31 yards. Nice job by Keenan Allen in double coverage. Darren Jones and LJ Jones, or excuse me, Darren Smith and LJ Jones both on the coverage. 
made it with a token fake and just putting the ball up there. He knows his brother very well. They've played catch their whole life. But he says, I know that this is my go-to guy. I can put the ball up, and I expect him to come down with it. And that is a nice level of security to have with one of your receivers. He's done it twice already today. Here's another one. Keenan Allen on the reception from Maynard all the way to the 41-yard line. And so good as a true freshman, 490 receiving yards. You see 136 rushing yards, kickoff returns. One of the best seasons for a true freshman receiver in Cal history. And there have been some pretty good ones. You go back down the list, you got guys like Brian Traggs and Sean Dawkins. Some very good receivers, and Keenan Allen's right there with all of them. Six of 10, 115 yards now for Zach Maynard after a very slow start. LJ Jones is the injured Bulldog, but he appears to be okay. Well, you said it, Maynard and Allen. They live together on campus. They've been together since they were little kids. They came to the California summer camp when they were in high school. They and three other friends and, in some cases, relatives from Greensboro, North Carolina, on this California team, and every one of them is an impact player. Every single one of them. And, and talk about a recruiting coup. You get one of those guys, which means you get all of those guys. That's big for Jeff Tedford, but what a connection to have. This time out of the gun. Maynard going to put it up again. Nice block by Cefali. Maynard throws deep. Got a bad Marvin Jones. He's got it inside the 10 yard line. Touchdown Bears! 42 yards and a touchdown. And Maynard started one of four with an interception. He's now six of seven since that time for 133 yards. That's a nice stat line after the fact. Marvin Jones doing such a great job. Beat Jermaine Thomas absolutely clean off the ball. Nobody there. Maynard had to step out of the pocket, hung it in the air a little bit. And Marvin Jones caught it, but the key being he kept his balance, took the shot, and still scored. Well, we talked about the strength of the California Golden Bears this year is at the wideout position. And I'll tell you what, I mean, Allen and Jones, they're playing on Sundays, in my opinion, both of them. So uh, so far, they both look very, very good. I, I think those are both future pros for the Bears. But, you know, Zach Maynard has to be happy. He's throwing the ball downfield. He's hitting the short routes. And it took that play action, moving him around, getting him on the roll to get him into this game. Well, that's very impressive what he's done here. And due credit, of course, to both Jones and Allen for going up and getting a couple of them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's tough to start off, too. He starts off with an interception. Sometimes it's hard to shake that, especially in your first start. But he came out, and obviously having that familiarity with his brother, and then Marvin Jones is a guy, the senior, that you're going to trust out there anyway. So most guys have to earn that relationship with the go-to guy. Zach just transferred into it because he had his yeah, exactly. brother here. Well, in fact, it's uh, Allen is really here more because of Maynard than Maynard is here because of Allen. Maynard decided, he went to Buffalo, of course, and decided he was going to transfer from Buffalo and turn a gill left to go to Kansas. Allen was headed for Alabama. But when Maynard said to Allen, remember we had such a good time out there? And let's go back out to California and see what that looks like. And the second time they came out there, they said we had a chance to go to the city. We came to San Francisco. We said, what a great place this is. And then he brought three more friends along, and the rest is making history. Here's Burse, and Burse trying to run laterally as a flag comes in late, gets to about the 27-yard line. Right now, all the momentum in this game is switched to the California Golden Bears. So we'll see about not one, but two penalty flags that went down. You know, so many times on special teams, kick returns, you know, kickoff returns especially, you have those guys that are trying to make the big blocks, trying to get there, and you just get your head on the wrong side and it becomes an illegal block, or you get too low because a guy's getting away from you and it becomes a cut. But those are the guys trying to earn their spot on that starting lineup, and they're trying to do it on special teams. There were fouls by both teams. Offside, kicking team, on the return, illegal block in the back by the return team. Will re uh, kick. Everybody's having a first game yes. here. <laughs> well, Keenan, you, you know, you talked about it, Barry. We talked to Zach yesterday about that trip out to California. They'd come out for a football camp here at Cal, which is how they got familiar with the Golden Bears. And Zach said when he was getting recruited after Buffalo, after Coach Turner left, he said, 
I, I thought about Cal, but I didn't think I was coming because during that football camp, all we did is walk up that hill. You and know that you know that, that hill. <laughs> As a freshman, Terry Shea told me, I want you to count how many times you walk up that hill while you're here, Mike Pulaski. <laughs> and what I did is I counted up to 17 and I said, that's it. I need a scooter. <laughs> And you got one. And I got one. And so it, it stood at 17. But that, he said, when he finally came back out and they saw what the Bay Area was actually all about, they fell in love with the place in a hurry. He went up on the rim of Memorial Stadium and he looked out over the bay and he said, this is the place for me. Yeah, we talked to a number of the Bears yesterday. They all talked about it. You know, how eclectic being at the University of California is. It, maybe it's not for everybody, but for the people who come there, they come there largely for that. Here's Burst again. This time at about the 13-yard line. And Burst is going to be stopped on a nice play downfield by Michael Coley. Now we talked about the five players from Greensboro. You got Zach Maynard, Keenan Allen, their brothers. Gabe King we haven't seen yet. But Maurice Harris, a freshman wide receiver, very good. And Chris McCain, who was an outside linebacker, who was a potential future superstar for the Golden Bears. They really like McCain. Here's a give on first down this time to Rouse. And Rouse will pick up about two, maybe three yards. I think the Bulldogs need an answer here. They have to get something going. You know, they've, they've showed you a little bit of screen and a little bit of run and a little bit of downfield pass, but they need to find what's going to work in this game. They're, they're trying to fill out Clancy Pendergast and figure out what he's giving him on defense, and right now they haven't found an answer for that Bulldog offense. Yeah, that's the other thing. This is the second year now under Clancy Pendergast for the California defense, and everybody's on the same page right out of the gate this time, including the coach. That's right. Short drop this time. Over the middle, catch is made by Wiley. It's a foot race, and I don't know that anybody's gonna get him. Wiley run down from behind at about the 15-yard line by DJ Campbell. Wow. 56 yards. Remember, we talked about how fast Wiley was. For DJ Campbell to reel him in like that, that is impressive speed. Nice job by Derek Carr. Finding the open receiver, that's a hot route down the middle. He makes the throw, delivers a pass, Wiley with the catch, but Campbell, I mean, he Caught had him. some giddy up and go. Caught him. That is unbelievable, the ground that he carried, and he did not have an angle. That is just a foot race. And there's a look at DJ Campbell. He was in a battle for the spot, actually, last year. Chris Conte won the starting spot, wound up getting drafted, and he's currently in the NFL. Yeah, and Conte won it as much because he was a senior as anything else. He could have been, you know, Campbell could have been the starter last year, but once Conte earned the spot, he just never let it go. But DJ Campbell showing he's got some wheels back there at safety. Rouse picked up about Holy two, but a penalty flag. Offense, number 78. Ten-yard penalty. Replay. First down. We'll have one untimed down. Richard Helipico, that's would have been the last play of the first quarter except for the fact that quarter can't end on the penalty so there'll be one more play and now the bulldogs looking at a first and long they said they had to get something going they get that big reception right off the bat they have to continue that momentum so many times teams will shoot themselves in the foot on drives like that you look back in the game you wonder what it was they need to continue to move the football and they need to stay on side they need to do all the right things and the bears just trying to hustle people off the field they'll call a timeout now not sure that they got everybody off on time i think they did actually but very important this year because of some of the rule changes to use your timeouts wisely, especially in the second half. We'll talk more about that. First quarter, second snap. Rough start for Zach Maynard. The Bulldogs capitalized here in the very short field that they were given by that Golden Bear offense. This Rouse with the touchdown. But then that Golden Bear offensive line and Will Cap, especially, did a nice job up front for Issei Safele. And the running game that Jeff Tedford has made so famous in that Golden Bear backfield. So they may have another great back back there in Sepele. Zach Maynard, once he finally got into the game and got some flow, 
Got it going. He's really starting to feel it out there, finding Marvin Jones, finding his brother Keenan Allen, and he's connecting when he needs to. I'll say 150-something yards here in this first quarter. Here this time a reverse was going to be a reverse pass, but stopped in the backfield before he could throw the ball was Saunders. And that will be the last play of the first quarter and a quarter that was pretty much dominated by the Cal Bears after that early interception by Zach Miner. Maynard rather at the first quarter break. It's California 19, Fresno State 7 coming back to Candlestick Park right after this. Well, let's take a moment to recognize our Sprint Unlimited update. And here are the numbers at the end of the first quarter, dominated by the Cal Bears. Now, you look at that, three times as many first downs, which means they kept the ball more on offense. But you look at total yards, it's almost a three to one advantage for the Bears. So, as we start the second quarter, Fresno State looking at a second and 18. straight back. Has to hurry his throw, throws it away. The Bears starting to get a very good push up front. Good job up front, and DJ Campbell, he's playing a man read on the outside. Clancy Pendergast, just so good on that defensive side of the ball. Came over from the NFL, where he served for years as a defensive coordinator, defensive coach. He said he had to get his toolbox in order here at Cal. He started off with all the verbiage and everything else. He had to minimize what he do, kind of limit it, so that every week when he sees a different offense, they can go with the same calls and guys are familiar with the verbiage. Third down, 18. Pass underneath and the catch is made by Wiley but stopped immediately by Josh Hill. Well, David Carr, who uh, is in the building, we'll try to catch up with him before uh, the day's end. In the 2001 season, he was sensational. Yeah, that's a good word for that. Almost 5,000 yards passing, 46 touchdowns. Won the Johnny Unitas Award, Sammy Baugh Award, WAC Offensive Player of the Year, obviously. I mean, that's a career for a lot of guys. Awesome. Gessling will try for a 35-yard field goal, which in this stadium is not a gimme. Drives it and does not get it. And it, you know, you got to put that on the facility as much as on a kicker. And then with kickers, the wind starts to get into your head and then your form starts to suffer. It's like a golf swing. You have to perfect it to the point where you can repeat the same move every time. Here's another look at it. And he gets it up in a hurry, yeah. but it just kind of hangs. And a little bit of that left-footed hook just outside, left upright. And he's an experienced kicker. He's an 80% field goal kicker for his career. So the Bears take over at the 20-yard line. Maynard, you see his numbers, and that's after a slow start. A little pistol look there. Yeah. Yep, straight ahead. So Fale, and he'll get to about the 28-yard line, a gain of about eight. You take that every time. You can run the ball hard downhill, get to that second level. That's how you control a football game because it's not just about you know playing on the field. It's all about emotional control too. It's about the feeling of dominating. And the way that you dominate a football game is by dominating in the running game. Jeff Tedford has known that. That's why he's been so big on running the football. And that's what he'd like to see this team do because once you can run it, you can open up the rest of your offense. Second and short. Kind of a free play, Maynard steps up, throws, too tall, intended for Johnson, who was double covered, so not a bad idea just to throw it up there and hope that only your guy can get it, if anybody. Marvin Jones, the senior, going to come back to that huddle and say, uh, we're going to have to have a little word if you're going to throw me high into the safety like that across the middle, <laughs> because that's not what we're doing for my senior year. Let's go down to Dan Dibley. Dan, a little bit breezy down there? Yeah, Barry, and now they're going with the wind, so Maynard's going to have to make that adjustment before going into the wind, throwing the ball, obviously, differently. But here with a tailwind, got to make that adjustment. Third down and short. And again, off the pistol. The ball is dropped, and Maynard falls on it. It'll be short sure of the first down. The exchange was never really made. And Maynard was the only one to see the ball and just jumped on it. You know, with these zone reads and the option reads by the quarterback now, so many times it's a choice of whether he pulls it or keeps it. And you watch the mesh. 
He's looking at that end to see if he's coming or not. Cefali actually got his hands up like he was catching a pass almost. Zach Maynard rode him, but I think the ball pulled out off the backside. They have to get that mesh down under live fire. So Brian Anger, one of the best punters in America, will kick it away with the wind, and he kicks a short kick that takes a backward hop. Uh, not, that's one I'm sure he would love to have back. It's finally downed after a 23-yard punt at the 48-yard line, so the Bulldogs will have good field position when we come back. It's candlestick weather. Blue skies, wind howling in a circular motion. It's like winter in September. <laughs> it's perfect. Give this time to Rice, who gets up ahead of steam, and he's going to take it inside the 35-yard line, about the 30 of California. Rashad Evans on the outside, making a nice block for him up front. And Leslie Cooper, right guard. Sealing that inside. So good job by that Fresno State offense of getting their blocks as well. Both teams running the ball well, picking up their blocks. When you see it on the whiteboard with the X's and O's, the X's are doing it on offense right now. You know, it's interesting. We talk about Cal having momentum in this game, and yet here's Fresno driving. They're at the 30-yard line in California territory. They score. It's a 19-14 to ball game. Straight back. They pick the blitz up. Carr throws for the end zone. He's got a man just over the outstretched fingertips of the intended receiver who was Jalen Saunders. That was great arm strength by Carr back there because he didn't have a whole bunch of time to set up for that throw. But he threw it from his 40 to the back corner. And Saunders... The number one ride receiver last year for Fresno State. He's the guy that Pat Hill really likes out there. Said is the fastest receiver in pads. Almost got to that ball. And he catches everything. And, and isn't that, if I'm not mistaken, that's the toughest part of this stadium to throw a ball to, right? That far corner of that end zone. Well, especially with the sun where it is right now, too. And this time, Carr was stepped on by one of his offensive linemen. And that hurts. That's either the center as he gets blocked back into stepping on his foot or that left guard in there. So many times as a quarterback, you're trying to come out clean, but you watch his feet and he gets stepped on by his, his center. Richard Alapico. That's a tough one. Todd Stucy, who went on to be a you know, multi-pro bowl player and played forever in the NFL, was starting at left guard for me one year. He stepped on me five times versus Miami. So even the best players sometimes step on the quarterback coming out. So Carl third in a bunch, throws a screen, and the Bears just get right in the middle of that. That had absolutely no chance for Burse. When we talked to Clancy Pendergrass, he said, we're not a stand-around defense. We're a defense that likes to come up and hit you. And Josh Hill that time came up and made the hit. But He's a guy that likes to pressure you, but he gives you so many different looks as a quarterback, he keeps you guessing. And all he wants you to do is hesitate for that extra second to see if he can get that pass rush home and make you feel uncomfortable because that makes the whole offense stutter. So the Bulldogs thought about going for it here in Bear territory. Instead, they will punt from the 34-yard line. So they'll try to play a little field position. Shapiro, the punter, angles it for the sideline, hits it pretty good, and it takes a backward hop, and the Bulldogs will down it at about the seven-yard line. Not a bad punt. And did you see the way he dropped that punt, Barry? He, instead of dropping it like a normal punt where you drop it straight down, take a look. He turns this ball right here, frees it. He's got the oh, point yeah. heading straight down, so he's kicking it for backspin. Go ahead and run it. And so when that ball hits, it's going to backspin, which is exactly what it did. Interesting new technique by a punter. Yeah, I'll say. And effective. Bears will have to start from their own eight-yard line now. 10-28 left first half, 19-7 ball game. The Bears on top. They've had two extra points blocked. That's the only negative for California so far. Give this time to Sofella and nothing do it. Might have lost yard. They say fumble. Fresno saying we got the ball, but I think the officials are saying the knee was down. And Knox doing a great job. 
And you can hear the boos rain down, and one of the reasons you can hear them is that Fresno State just simply travels well. They probably have, what would you say, 20,000 fans here? Uh, at least 20,000, all red across the stadium, and the top level's red as well. Look at that. Kyle Knox with a big play. Moving into that middle linebacker position, actually listed as an outside linebacker. Doing a good job inside the Bulldogs. Second and 11, here's Maynard on the keep. Maynard has the first down and a lot more across the 25 to the 26, and he had a lot of grass. And again, the running quarterback giving you so many options. Giving that zone read look inside, and then he just takes the middle. Darren Smith coming up with the final tackle at that safety position, but you don't want safeties making tackles on quarterbacks because that means it's a big game. You can see that entire side of the stadium, Fresno fans, and here's a bad snap and a flag before anything could happen. Throw the guard. False start. Offense. Right guard. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. In that case, the Bears are lucky. Yes. You know, early on in the season, you're going to see some miscues. Obviously, coaches who have worked so hard in the offseason, during the spring, into fall, they hound guys in camp. All right, you usually have mistakes in that first week. We don't want to see any mistakes. you got to be perfect. You want to really focus. And inevitably, you still come out and you have your mistakes in the first game. Absolutely. They bring Cefali this time to the near side of the field. Go empty. Four-man rush. Made a quick toss knocked down. Might have thrown it right into yeah. the back of Mitchell Schwartz. He actually hit Schwartz in his right ear hole with that ball. For the left tackle, Schwartz looking. So the screen technique is to throw your guy to the outside. Schwartz turning, <laughs> and he ends up taking a bean right in the dome. He's a big guy, 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> that's, that's a low throw. You can't throw it that low. So it'll be second down and 15. Later, quick throw this time, a dangerous throw, but caught nicely by Miller. Miller turns it upfield with a 40 to the 44-yard line, and that could have gone either way. That's one of those plays as a defensive player where either you're taking it to the house or you're giving it up to go to the house. That was a dangerous pass. Watch how close See, this came to being. Darren a Smith driving, almost got that ball. Instead, Miller comes up with the catch. But Keenan Allen doing a nice job of getting a block, but had he got his man down, LJ Jones down, that would have been six points for the Bears. So as a def defensive player, if you're going to gamble, you've got to at least knock that ball down. As it is a first down for the Bears, C.J. Anderson in the ball game at running back for the first time for California. Maynard straight back, steps up, throws, got his brother, and Allen this time can't hang on. Maynard did throw it to the wrong shoulder, but Allen still got his hands on the ball. Yeah, that's still a very catchable ball. That's one thing that Maynard can work on during this week. And again, there is no simulating game conditions until you're actually playing in a game. He'll look at film, he'll settle down a little bit, but he's been a little bit off on target where the ball needs to be, as you pointed out, Barry. Throw it to the right shoulder. Throw it to the place where the receiver's heading. Don't stop him and make him make the tough catch. And they'll work on that accuracy during the week. I wonder if he's looking back into the sun, too. Second down and 10. This is Anderson. Nothing to do it. First carry for the Laney College transfer. Who and worked his way up the depth chart for Jeff Tedford. And a tough one because it looked like he didn't quite get the handoff clean, ended up slowing down in the hole and gave Darren Smith an opportunity to make the tackle. Again, that mesh so vitally important, and especially in that zone read style of offense, you have to get it clean. You have to practice it so many times, and you have to practice it at game speed. So it's third and long. It hasn't bothered the Bears the last two times they've been in this situation. Six defensive backs for the Bulldogs. trouble this time and he's wrapped up thrown all the way down back at the 26 yard line by Logan Harrell. 
Fresno State have some new wrinkles on their defense, and one of them is, as we're seeing here today, when a team goes empty set, here's empty, watch the linebackers start to walk down for the dog. Right here, as a quarterback, you got to know that they're coming, and you have to find your hot route. Maynard did not do it. He didn't see it. That's inexperience at that quarterback position. Fresno State won on defense. Brian Anger to punt, a wobbly kick again, a short kick. And it's taken by Wiley, and Wiley will get it back to the 40-yard line. So the Bulldogs, once again, will have good field position with 6.49 remaining in the first half. Just a 36-yard punt by Anger and a five-yard return. The pressure coming from Harrell, and he gets his man. We're coming back. 19-7 ball game. California over Fresno State, 6.49 remaining to be played here in the first half. And a reminder to join us next Saturday for more Cal football as the Golden Bears travel to Colorado to take on the Buffaloes in a non-conference matchup, even though both these teams are now in the Pac-12. Last season in Berkeley, the Bears demolished the Buffs by a score of 52-7. It's Cal in Colorado next Saturday, 12.30, right here on Comcast Sportsnet, California. First and 10 now for the Bulldogs. They go with two tight ends, single set back, two wideouts. Carves straight back from under center, throws, and the catch is made by Evans. Pickup of about five. Colorado Buffaloes, of course, in Boulder, Colorado. I remember doing a game there. In fact, you might have even been in this game, Mike, where we went through all four seasons in the space of three hours. <laughs> it was about 65 degrees when we got there. It was a blizzard when we left. You gotta love the mountains, especially the Rocky Mountains. But you know, such a wonderful place, but a whole new look for the Buffs this year. Cal, we were talking to them about the game next week, and they said, we don't even have any film to look at because this week they play Hawaii. That's right. And so that's nothing to look at from the defensive side. Not going to do anything the same. Pushing straight ahead this time for first down is Rouse. And the Bulldogs all of a sudden seem to have a little life. They've been running the ball effectively. Really, their passing game and the communication, the, the, you know, the small catches, the hot routes, those kind of things, they need to find a way to get on the same page with quarterbacks and receivers. Again, the receiver's such a potent threat for Fresno State that they need to use their speed on the outside. They've got to catch the short routes first. Car straight back. Holt comes on a blitz. It's picked up. Car throws. Got a man. Catch made. Not a bounce. Saunders. A little short of the first down. Pickup of about eight. Nice throw and catch. Carr doing a nice job. He gets outside, but he feels a little bit of pressure. He pulls up and still delivers a strike. And that's a huge play. It doesn't seem like you know it's eight yards, but it changes the whole playbook as an offensive coordinator. Second and short is so much better than second and long and third and long. And it opens up the playbook with what you can call. A.J. Ellis is now the running back. And this is Ellis, and Ellis with that stutter step, and that's something that you really can't do when you get to this level. Michael Kendricks makes the stop for the Bears, a loss of about two, and that'll be third down and a long four. And this defense designed to get Kendricks literally open to make plays. He's playing that weak inside linebacker, the will linebacker spot. And that's the position on defense that's the playmaker for Clancy Pendergrass. And he says, we're going to find a way to get him involved in every play. As we put him in this spot, we're clearing holes. We're, we're making things available for him to make plays. They go with an empty backfield this time. And the blitz comes. Carr unloads quickly in and out of the hands of Evans. And it'll be fourth down. That probably would have been a first down, but Carr again victimized. Hurried his throw a little bit, threw the ball low. Just that bunch look on the outside, throwing it and a little bit low, but you have to make that catch. If you're a receiver at the D1 level, you have to make the catch, and Evans not able to pull it down. So Shapiro will punt it away. Jones, wearing 49, will be the deep man. And a high twisting kick, fair catch called by Jones and made at the six yard line. So the Bears will be looking at a long field and four minutes and 24 seconds to try to put a little bit more on the board. Get a quiet second quarter so far. Cal will have it when we come back. For a touchdown, 
and Stanford playing like the number five team in the country. And that man a huge part of the reason why just so good at that quarterback position. And a bad snap coming out of the end zone here is Cefeli and Cefeli is going to be cracked, loses the football, that's going to be a touchdown Fresno State. From bad to worse and that goes on your center. Wilson with the recovery in the end zone but the Bears were shifting. Illegal shift. Offense. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. The Bears were shifting. You could see because two men were in motion. They were just shifting sides of formation, shifting strength. And as these guys come across, Gallus thought that the snap was called. And so he snapped that ball, but Maynard wasn't ready. At this point, if you're E.C. Cefele, you've got to find a way to either get out of the end zone, but definitely don't cough it up. At worst, when he had that ball, it would have been a safety. But he turned it from a safety with the fumble into a touchdown for Fresno State. And Wilson in the process, I think he took a helmet and a ribs from one of his teammates and had the wind knocked out of him. Oh, it's Jones, I beg your pardon. But he is okay. Meantime, Wilson gets a touchdown. You see, it's a shift, and Maynard not expecting the snap at all. Marvin Jones doing everything he can to try to get Cefali out of the end zone. That's why he had a Fresno State player down on the ground in the end. And just like that, this is a five-point ball game. You know, Fresno State was in one of those hang around, hang around, hang around modes. You do not want to let them hang around. Pat Hill told us yesterday, it's not that we ever lose a game, we just run out of time. And if you if you let them hang around, they will find a way to beat you. Let's go to Dan Dibley now on the sideline. Fresno got a little wake-up call, Dibs. Yeah, Barry, a much-needed wake-up call. And this is a program that's used to playing big games in big places. The motto, anybody, anytime, anywhere. It's been what Pat Hill has done in his years at Fresno State. It didn't start out great for Fresno against BCS schools, but they've won seven of their last ten against those schools from the automatic qualifier conferences. Two of those three losses, by the way, to Wisconsin. Wisconsin, and things don't get easier for Pat Hill and company next week at Nebraska. Old Miss comes to town in October, then Boise State, and looking ahead to next year, they're going to Oregon, and of course, they're switching conferences as well. You've got to applaud Fresno State for always going out and taking on anybody, anytime, and anywhere, Barry. Absolutely, Dibs. In fact, he uses it as a recruiting tool. No question about it, and he told us yesterday, that's what, what do you play for? If you don't play for those games, then what do you play for? And you know what? And Dibs mentioned they've won seven out of their last ten. Over the last, I believe it's ten years, they've won 17 and lost 15 yeah. of those games. Again, it's very good opponents. I mean, they're not scared of anybody. And, and so many times, Pac-10 coaches, they, you know, they get a little chip on their shoulder because Coach Hill will tell them, I'll come to your place and I'll play you any time. And nobody will come but to Fresno. Yeah, it's a challenge for a brawl. He doesn't get any return games. No. And Dibbs also mentioned two of those losses to Wisconsin, but both of those they were in the game and could have won. Yeah, nail biter. This is Edmund who will get it back short of the 30-yard line. Wilson makes the stop. Wilson, incidentally, filling in for Philip Thomas, who was out for the season, a freak injury in practice. And Pat Hill said he was his best defender. Wilson doing a nice job Yeah, today. he was his best defender, but not just that. He said, and he has several guys playing in the league now, he said he was the best DB that he's coached in his tenure there. Yeah. So that is a huge loss for that Fresno State defense. So the Bears start right at the 30-yard line is where they mark it. And they've been sputtering a little bit the last couple of possessions. Give this time to Cefeli gets to the edge. And Cefeli knocked out of bounds as he gets to the 35-yard line by Isaiah Green. Cefeli actually creating his own block on this play. There were three white jerseys in the hole. And watch Cefeli take the downhill angle as he takes this angle this side all bites in. When they do, he pops it, springs to the outside, and picks up the extra yards. Nice job committing to your path and then reacting to the white jerseys in front of him. Second down and five. This time they start to go out of the pistol. And they will go out of the pistol. Maynard will put it up. Throws and the catch is made by Calvin. Calvin unable to get away though. He's going to be short of the first down by a yard. It'll be third and one. Travis Brown making sure that Calvin did not get enough yardage for the first. 
So a lefty quarterback at Cal, not since Justin Vetter. You see Mater dropping back and delivering the pass, and you know you see so many right-handed guys that a lefty oftentimes looks looks a little awkward, a little bit different. The receivers had to get used to catching the ball with the opposite spin. And I asked him about it yesterday, he said, or he said, yeah, you know, they had to get used to it at first, but now that they're catching it all the time, they're used to that left-handed spin. Third down and a yard. C.J. Anderson gets the call, tries the left side, has the first down, gets the shoulders going in the right direction, and gets it all the way to midfield. Harrell makes the stop, but a gain of 11 for C.J. Anderson. So, so far for that Cal offense, we've seen the traditional pro-style two-back set. We've seen the heavy set with two tight ends, two backs. We've seen the pistol. We've seen the single back spread. We've seen the, the wide open empty set. So we've seen everything. I, we probably haven't seen everything that Cal has, but we've seen a lot of what they've had so far. And obviously they're going multiple with the offense this season. And it gives defenses something to have to study in the game room, yeah, in the film room. And they do have an option package too, which we haven't seen yet today. Maynard with plenty of time this time. Throws it out for Allen and throws it out of bounds. Cal just as, uh, as we said earlier, sputtered a bit here in the second quarter. They've had three possessions. They had a three and out, had eight plays and a punt. And then they had that last play with a fumble in the end zone that resulted in a touchdown for Fresno State. Coach Mahalchek trying to figure out what to do with his guys up front. But this is when you tell a quarterback starting to feel it. He's got the corner route coming from the inside, and he hangs on it all day. But what he didn't do is come down to Michael Calvin, who was standing all alone in the flat down there. He was trying to hang on the big throw for too long when he should have taken the easy one. Here's a slant for Allen, and Allen's got some room to the outside 30, to the 20. One man to beat at the 5 and out of bounds, but the flag is down back at midfield. Here's the question. If those blocks are downfield and the ball was caught downfield, there is a legal block. Personal foul. Legwith tripping number 75 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. Replay second down. So that's, that's the down the line screen. You have the big man coming from inside out to clear your receiver and the perfect call against the defense that Fresno State presented. Summers Gavin getting outside. It looked like a clean cut to me from up here. But the official's right on the spot. So instead of having it down to the three-yard line, the Bears are going to be back way up in their own territory, all the way back at the 36. As you watch, you're going to see offensive linemen coming from inside out to pick up the block. Allen coming back inside across of it. I didn't see a leg whip. There was no leg whip anywhere in there. I think the official missed it right on the shadow. Maynard throws, and he's got a man again. It's Jones this time down to the 41-yard line. It'll still be short of the first down. L.L. Jones makes the stop on Marvin Jones. This can't keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> It's going to be third down and about three. Nice job. You see how Maynard's head was looking to the field. He was holding that safety to the field, and he came back to the seam post on the backside. That's something you don't get with a young quarterback. But remember, Maynard was a starter at Buffalo. He's seen college experience, and he knows what he's doing back there. He's a little more comfortable in the pocket. He knows how to hold guys with his eyes and did a nice job delivering the backside throw after looking the safety off. He's now up over the 200-yard mark for the day, 207 yards passing for Zach Maynard. Well, a reminder that coming up on the Sprint Halftime, Sportsnet Central will have a halftime report, bringing you up to date on everything that's happening all around, not only in football, but big baseball games around as well. The paper airplane guy with a former Cal quarterback. And no dibs will be in the middle of that. Highlights all the numbers. Lots of good stuff <laughs> at the half. Bears fans on hand here at the stick. So the Bears would like to get a little add to here. Offense has moved the ball, but they've self-destructed here in the second quarter. This time they spread it out. They go empty. Four-man rush. 
And now whistles blow, and we are going to get another flag. Fresno State started with 13 men on the field. They got one off and still had 12 men on the field at the snap. Pat Hill was adding them up. Illegal substitution, defense, five-yard penalty. First down. Results in a first down. So both teams, I mean, this is a first game, and it's being played like a first game. Exactly. You, ha you have your defensive sets. Here goes the first guy off, but they've got one extra. He's got to go, too. The Bears caught him in it, trying to figure out who was playing where. Too many white shirts on the field. This isn't the CFL. <laughs> That's right. There's no rouge. <laughs> So first down for the Bears now. Maynard will go up again, throws a comebacker, and well covered that time by L.J. Jones was Marvin Jones. A little double move route by Marvin Jones. A little stutter out and then up and come back. And actually good timing on that throw by Maynard. If he gets that ball up about a foot, that's a catch on the sideline. So it'll be second down. 141 remaining to be played here in the half. 19 to 14 ball game. Six defensive backs for the Bulldogs here. And they come with a three-man rush. And Nader rolls away, and now he throws underneath. The catch is made by Calvin. Calvin will get it to about the 23-yard line, but a flag is down, and I think we're going to get a hold. Holding. Offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. Getting a little sloppy out here. Well, Dominic Gallus, again, the center, trying to protect his quarterback. And so many times when your quarterback comes free, the offensive linemen try to hold guys back. Chase McEntee right up on Dominic Gallus in the backfield. As he turned, you know, your hands start to get away from your body. And any time as an offensive lineman, your hands get away from your body, the officials see that, and they call it a hold. So the numbers on the penalties as uh, the play gets a little bit shoddy here. Not unexpected in the first game. Bears would very much like with just under a minute and a half left to get a touchdown going into the locker room. And again, moving prematurely was Brian oh, Schwenke. Offense, number 57. Five yard penalty, still second down. <laughs> Seventh California penalty. Right now it's time to take a deep breath. Everybody to kind of regroup on that offensive side of the ball for the Bears. And it's not like Fresno State is doing it to Cal. It's Cal shooting themselves in the foot right now. Absolutely. Well, Justin Cheadle is the only member of the offensive line not to be called for a penalty today. And here's another one. <laughs> the Bears going backward in a hurry here. Well, well both tackles got oh, out Scott. early. Offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. And the Fresno State fans loving it. The volume in the stick turned up by about double of what it was a few minutes ago. It's starting to get a little chilly in here, too, but not on the sunny side. Second down and 31. And they've lost 10 without snapping the ball. That's not how you draw it up on the whiteboard. I don't think so. We're trying to determine if there needs to be a 10-second subtraction. New rule this year. That's, we just talked for about 20 minutes with the both coaches. decided to take the 10-second subtraction. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 48 seconds. Game clock will start on my ready for play signal. Yeah, I mean, so, we, we talked with Jeff about that yesterday. The ruling being last minute of each half, if you have a penalty, now while the clock is running is the big question. It, you, you, can, you have to run off an extra 10 seconds if the defense so chooses. And it, it's not as big a deal in the first half as it is at the end of the game. Allen makes the catch there for a gain of 13. The Bears will go hurry up, 28 seconds left now. Go ahead, you can finish that thought, Mike. Well, that'll be one of the big topics of college football this year because there will be teams that lose a game on the 10-second runoff at some point this season. Maynard throws this one away, and now it'll be fourth down. So 
So with 16 seconds, I believe the Bears will just run a play here. Well, with fourth down, you can't run the full 16 seconds off. And you don't want to turn the ball over. That's an interesting decision here. Now we got more whistles. Second charge timeout, Fresno State. 30 seconds, timeout. Yeah, yeah, I think there are two rules, and that one is one that certainly is going to come into play. It already yes. has here. Because basically in the second half, if you don't use your timeouts well, you're looking at a 29-minute and 50-second ball game exactly. in the second half. Changes everything, changes coaching philosophy. But then, of course, the other one that we have not seen rear its ugly head. In fact, I haven't seen it anywhere in the country today, but I'm sure it will happen sooner rather than later. And that's that taunting excessive yeah. celebration penalty. A new taunting rule as we look at the top ten. Everybody that's supposed to win so far, that it was expected to win, has won. No big upsets this week. But the taunting penalty, they really want to put a cap on a lot of the sportsmanlike problems that they've been having, unsportsmanlike problems they've been having around college football. And if you've been watching college football, you've seen it. Guys doing inappropriate things on the field. So they're calling it very tightly this year, and they've instituted a penalty where if you taunt, you can literally take a touchdown off the board if you taunt during live play. It will be called back from the point of the taunt. It could end up being a penalty in the huge yardage numbers. Here's Maynard. Maynard running back. When Maynard's just going to try to run the clock here. The clock has not started. And now here's Maynard throwing to the end zone. And he, he would have had his man, but I think Calvin just kind of quit on the play. And there was an absolute D cleater by Justin Cheadle on that play. <laughs> wow. And Akers is down. Yeah, he got one of those clean, no look. The game clock did not run the entire play. That should be the half. Please reset the game clock to six seconds. So here again is the play. Now you can see the game clock did not start. Game clock down there. That thing's supposed to be running while that ball is moving. And there and was that the block. was the block. I mean, that was nasty. See now, Calvin actually, I think, quit on his route. And as it turned out, that could have been a touchdown. So there's six seconds left, and Fresno State's going to have the ball. Well, and that was very generous for Fresno State because that clock, that that play burned a lot of it time. Did. It did. In our truck, they say 13 seconds. Watch the block by Cheadle. It was clean. This is the offensive line highlight film. Head in front, and Cheadle cleans up two guys. He gets Akers and picks up another man to boot. Now this is a situation where Pat Hill, I, I have no doubt that he's got a play in his pocket here. There's a quick pass this time. Well, maybe that was the play. Yeah. <laughs> a design play for two yards as the first half comes to an end. Of, kind of a weird first half, I think. Yeah, the, the end of that half, think the wheels were starting to come off on both sides. And Dad Dibley will try to make his way to Jeff Tedford, and I'm sure he's going to ask Tedford about his thoughts on the first half, and Tedford's going to say, sloppy, we made too many mistakes. Let me just take a wild guess here. And knowing Jeff Tedford, he absolutely, it was a fumble in the end zone. He hates turnovers. It was a, it was a bad play leading to a turnover, so it just, it's exponential for him. All right, let's find out. Here's Dan Dibley. Thanks, Barry. Jeff, aside from a couple mistakes, how do you assess the offense in the first half? Well, the couple mistakes are, you know, there's some good plays, but uh, we've had some trouble with the snap count and things like that, and so we have to shore those up. I mean, really, our two turnovers are what led to their touchdown, so uh, we just have to make sure that we get it, we settle down, we get everybody on the same page. Did Zach Maynard settle down, in your opinion, and how would you assess his play? Well, that's he's in the process of settling down, yeah. It, it's him, and then it's a new center, and, you know, it's everybody. We just got to settle down, get communication right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. 
All right, thanks very much, Dibs. So the score at the end of the first half, the California Golden Bears 19, the Fresno State Bulldogs 14. It's still a ball game as the fog rolls in. Now stay tuned for the halftime show presented by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. Halftime show coming up. Welcome back to Candlestick Park, 19 to 14 at the half. California clinging to a five-point lead over Fresno State. Barry Tompkins, along with Mike Pulaski, and uh, Mike, I guess sloppy, probably the best way to describe the first 30 minutes of play. Here. Yeah, first game we talked about it in the open. A lot of new faces, a lot of young talent. They have to get used to playing at game speed. They haven't seen it yet. Well, now that they're getting a taste of it. Things are looking a little soft. Yeah, I thought Jeff Tedford really kind of downplayed it in his talk with Dan Dibley, though, going off. Exactly, and, and you know, you can see him laughing about it. He said, "Yeah." Well, besides the mistakes, those two big mistakes are two big turnovers. You know, the young kids are making their mistakes early. And right now, Fresno State staying in this ballgame. That's a dangerous position for the Bulldogs. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the highlights from this game. First quarter. And Maynard immediately with the interception. L.J. Jones makes it an easy touchdown for Rouse in that tailback position. Short field, always makes it simple for the offense. The Bears get a nice drive and they cap it off. Will Cap with a big block out front. Issei Safele just walking to the end zone. And again, that Bears offensive line showing up early, guys making blocks. And Safele only just couldn't believe that he was so wide open downfield, nobody around him. And Maynard on a little bit of a broken play coming back. He hits Marvin Jones, keeps his balance and gets in the end zone. That Cal offense really starting to roll. You can tell this young quarterback starting to feel it. But then, down on the goal line, Cal in the middle of a shift and the snap over his head. Safele trying to get out and he coughs the ball up. Wilson with the big recovery of the fumble of the end zone. You can see Cal dominating on offense. But the turnovers are huge. Today's first half stats are brought to you by RBC Wealth Management. Investing. Well, we're investing in our communities for over a half a century, and there you see the numbers. The total, you look at total yards for Cal, you look at passing yards for Cal, you look at rushing yards for Cal, and the Bears are dominating on the offensive side of the ball. But the two big turnovers both led to points for Fresno State. And right now, turnovers have been very big. This Pat Hill team last year was minus 11 in turnovers, but so far in this game, they're plus two. Numbers don't always tell the story. Thank you for watching the halftime show. It's presented by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. Second half kickoff coming up next. Welcome back to Candlestick Park. Barry Tompkins, Mike Pulaski, Dan Dibley. 19 to 14 ball game as we prepare to start the third quarter. Shadows have now covered the field here. There's a look at Pat Hill. And you know what? His team is in this game. And that's when he's awfully tough. Yeah. You know, he, he's a guy that if you let him hang in the game, he will find a way to beat you. He's been so good for so long in this program. You know, just on the verge of, of becoming the winningest coach down there after, of course, legendary Jim Sweeney, who was so good for so long in that program. But and Jeff, Je Jeff Tedford, I'm sure, you know, I, my guess is he didn't go in there and fire and brimstone it for his team at halftime. Probably just said, look, settle down. Let's just play. He doesn't have to. He's got a little bit of that Darth Vader to him. When he walks into a room, he's got that presence. The guys just kind of fear him naturally. What happened in the Pac-10 today? Well, Utah over Montana State. They win by 17. SC, a narrow victory over Minnesota in the Coliseum. Houston beats UCLA. That's a pretty good Houston team with Keenan back at quarterback. Arizona State, an easy winner the other night. Sacramento State beats Oregon State. That's the upset of the day in the Pac-12. Washington State, big over Idaho State. 65. Four points for Washington State. That's going to make the good folks in Pullman happy. Washington was behind Eastern Washington, comes back to lead it. Still going on in the third quarter, and Stanford easy over San Jose State. Here, it's a 19 to 14 ball game, and uh, those fans are going to get a little chilly over the next hour. I promise. I think they may be underdressed for what's about to come, Barry. Yes. Temperature drops dramatically it's, here when the sun goes down. It's already dropped up here in the box. You can feel that moisture that's come in in the yep. fog, and you can feel the wind whipping in the booth. I feel I may be a little underdressed up here. I should have brought <laughs> my Arctic true. gear. It's true. 
I was telling you yesterday, I, I remember the coldest I've ever been was on the sideline at a preseason 49er game in July. Oh. Well, that's the old saying, right? The coldest winter I ever spent was yes. the summer I spent in San Francisco. That's Mark Twain said that. That's exactly right. So Tavecchio will kick it off for the Bears. Fresno State will get it first. Bourse will be the deep man for the Bulldogs. Tavecchio has had two extra points blocked in this game. He's been short on his kickoffs. Drives this one pretty good against the wind about the seven yard line. Here's Boris running laterally, gets the 20, no gap. And he stopped as he crossed the 25 yard line, about the 27. And that's where Derek Carr will start. DJ Campbell on the tackle on special teams for the Bears. Incidentally, we mentioned earlier that David Carr, Derek's older brother, is in the building and he is on the Fresno State sideline and he's talking to Derek after almost every possession. And that's one thing that he's done as Derek's been growing up to. Pat Hill pointed out yesterday, you know, Derek Carr further along than David was at this point because his older brother David has really helped him out with football specific stuff. The give this time is to Rouse and Rouse will get to about the 30 yard line and get about three. <laughs> And Carr wanting to get a little more rhythm. You know, he, he was throwing some accurate balls, guys dropping his passes early on. He wants to be able to complete some passes, move the chains, get that rhythm going for himself. His offense has really stuttered a little bit, and it's been mainly on account of drop passes. It's time to go with an empty backfield. Three wide receivers to the left side, the long side of the field. And a quick screen this time. And getting close to the first down was Wiley. Going to be about a yard short. Nothing fancy about that play, but it's an effective play. Yeah, that quick pop to the outside. Again, you get the athletes the ball and let them make plays. But with all the speed that Fresno State has at that wideout position, I would expect them to try to stretch the field a little more. I know you have a young quarterback, but really the deep ball is a timing throw. You drop back five, you hitch and throw. And a young guy like Carr should feel very comfortable throwing that deep ball. Bulldogs only one of six in third down conversions. They have about a yard to get here. And they give it to Rouse, and he's hit and rolled forward. But the spot keeps him behind that first yeah, down chain. He's not going to get there. And Pat Hill is going to bring on the punting team. You know, that defensive line, the strength for this Cal defense, they have very good linebackers, but this time Guyton and Comparelli in on the play. Those guys at that defensive front for Cal are really going to be a strength all season long. So Jones will be the deep man for California, back at about the 25-yard line now. Shapiro to punt. Drives this one. Jones might have a chance here. 20 yard line. Flag is down. Jones trying to get outside. Gets a crackback block, but going to be surrounded down. That's another flag. That's two illegal blocks in the back. Yeah. 45 yard punt. And it's going to go back further. That is a classic first game penalty. You know, guys so aggressive, trying to get that block, trying to clean it up. And. and Sometimes you have to learn to pull it back. If you don't have the angle, you've got During to pull the back. Of the kick, there were two fouls. Illegal block in the back. Return team, number 44. That penalty is declined. Illegal block in the back. Return team, number one. That penalty will be accepted. First down. Apparently there's a sale on clipping today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a sale on Come, penalties. You've got it general. right here. you got to get your head across, and he didn't, didn't get it done. And then as Jones makes the break to the wide side of the field, it's going to come up right there is your second one. Again, head has to be across the front of the body of the man that you're blocking. Didn't quite happen. Those are both what used to be called clipping, now illegal blocks in the back. So this is going to take the Bears all the way back inside the 10-yard line. for Maynard and the offense will start. California offense 
sputtered mightily in the second quarter. Now at their own nine yard line. And again to Safeli, and he's going to be stopped before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Good pursuit that time by the, off the defensive line of the Bulldogs. Jeremiah Toma on the stop. He's been very active today. Nice job of getting penetration, cutting off that front side, and the backside filling in. As a linebacker, you have full responsibility. You fill in that gap so that if a running back tries to cut back into your hole, you're there for the tackle, and Toma playing it perfectly. Mark it right back at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. Maynard to Safari again. Big hole this time. And Safari gets it headed in the right direction to about the 13-yard line. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Nice jump cut to start. Watch him make the initial shake on LJ Jones right here. Wah! Back to the outside. But he couldn't quite keep his feet underneath him for the second one. Schwanky making a nice block up front. You know, the difference between Safele and Javid Best when Best was here, he could make that first cut and then make that second cut. Safele had to try to keep his feet underneath it for that second cut. Made it on the keeper, and he's got room 20, 25, 30, to the 35, 40. At midfield to the 45-yard line and out of bounds. Inside the 40 at about the 38-yard line of Fresno State. And tell me that doesn't add a dimension to your offense. Defensive coordinators hate playing teams with mobile quarterbacks because you always have to be responsible for them. There's that zone read, the defensive end bites down, and Maynard takes the ball to the outside. Nothing but green grass. Remember, Fresno State has not seen this on film from the Bears, and so it's hard to practice something that you have not seen. 42 yards on the gain on third and short for Maynard. And the Bears in business at the Bulldogs 39. C.J. Anderson in it running back, play fake. Maynard's going to go up, throws over the middle, got Allen in the field. I yeah. mean, that's, that was, he practically took his jersey off. That should have been a touchdown. And yes, it was interference on Terrence Dennis, who was right there. But pass interference, defense, number 15. Penalty enforced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. That's called pulling the string. As a quarterback, you see your guy break open, you think, oh, don't miss him. And what you do is you force yourself to miss him because as soon as you think that, all the small muscles in your forearms start to tighten up, you short step, and you aim that ball. And because of that, he missed hitting his brother for a touchdown, threw it short. He picked up the pass interference, but he should have had six points. Now they bring the ball all the way back, and then they march the penalty off. So basically it did. It saved a touchdown. <laughs> and the ball will be at the 24-yard line after all is said and done. The Bears will have a first down. But you have to, as a quarterback, later on, you just have to trust yourself to make that throw. He got back there. The play worked exactly as designed. But again, that's the difference between game speed and practice speed. When you see him pop open in a game, it actually means something. In practice, it's just another ball. This time to give straight ahead to Cefele, and Cefele is met before it could get started by Harrell. Logan Harrell, an all whack performer for that defense for Fresno State, the guy they expect big things out of this year, closing quickly, but he's coming from that defensive tackle spot, and Maynard actually reading the end on that zone read play, so Harrell being disruptive, getting the backfield. He's going to be one of the leaders this defense this season. Loss of two on the play, it'll be second and 12 for the Bears. To give to Cefeli again, and Cefeli stutter steps, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, plus maybe a yard, and that's going to bring about a third and nine. I say a green on the stop for the Bulldogs. Nice job by Cefeli of making something out of nothing, nothing there originally. A little lateral move to his right, and able to at least gain positive yards, but now the Bears with third and nine, and that playbook gets a whole lot smaller when you're looking at third and nine. It does, and kicking in this direction, if you're thinking field goal, is not an easy task. The wind is really howling now. Maynard, out of the gun, 
Jordan this time throws wide open is Jones. First down and more to the five. Touchdown. And that is the third time that we have seen him do that this game. He had Devon Dunn on him outside of that corner position. And he flipped the tackle and then continued down the sideline. Marvin Jones picking up as a senior wide receiver, making plays after the catch. So he got the first down here, then he makes the first man miss. And the extra effort gets him into the paint. So Tavecchio will try the point once again. He's at two blocked. He does get this one up and gets it through. And it's a 26 to 14 California lead. So the Bears get it right in here. And Jones with the touchdown reception. Had a break a tackle to do it much as he did the last time. 26 to 14 California. There he is right there. Maynard now, incidentally, 12 to 23, 243 yards, two touchdowns. I'll put that in the category of good debut. It's a good start, and a few of those balls drop balls. A few, a few things where he pulled the string, he missed on the short stuff. He can improve his game, but definitely a confidence builder for him so far. Marvin Jones, you saw his numbers, five catches, 119 yards, two scores. Tavecchio hits this one. This will be Gorse at the nine yard line. And again, stopped by the first man to him, who in this case was Michael Coley. Coley, a couple of nice plays on special teams for the Bears today. You know, so many times you have to get it done on special teams to see the field. These guys trying to contribute any way they can. And remember, to make it to that D1 level, you had to be a superstar in high school because there's a lot of talent out there. But these guys were all stars in high school. And now, when you don't start on offense or defense, your only way to make a mark is on that special teams game. So Carr now goes out of the gun on first down. Flag is down, Carr throws, and the play is going to be whistled dead before it could get going. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, still first down. Fifth penalty against the Bulldogs. That's the guy you were talking about in the background there. It's actually Mike Blasquez. He's the head strength coach now for football, and one of the biggest coaching moves they made in the offseason was to get Mike Blasquez. Coach Ted for deciding... This is a guy that I want to, to get my kids in the weight room. And I've been around football for a long time. Mike Blasquez is probably the best strength coach I've ever met. Straight ahead this time is Rouse, and he'll get it back to the original line of scrimmage. He's done a great job with the basketball team, too, oh, for fan, several years. Fantastic job with the basketball team. You look at fall camp for the Bears this year, very few injuries. Guys came in in fantastic shape. He's got you know, a whole bunch of guys setting new records in the weight room. Michael Calvin coming out with a 42-inch vertical jump. You know, backup wide receiver. Coleman Edwin with a 40.5. Ernest Awusu, defensive lineman, comes in. You know, he has a 460-pound bench and a 625-pound squat. He's done some weight room training with these kids in the offseason. Car short drop, throws it out here, jump ball, and a flag. They're going to get Harper. Harper, the redshirt freshman. One of those things, there wasn't much he could do. Yeah, Harper, a, a very physical player. Pass interference. Defense, number two. 15-yard penalty. Automatic push down. And Coach Tedford making the same argument you were, Barry. Yep. The ball's up in the air. Our defender's just in position. Mark Anthony right there where he's supposed to be in the hip pocket. And when Harper goes up, there's nothing. His hands are even up. His hands aren't even on him, on the receiver. But Harper using the big body over Anthony, and he draws the penalty. It's like in basketball, and you go for the shot, trying to draw that penalty going up. Harper just did the same thing from that yep, wide receiver exactly. spot. First down at the 45-yard line for the Bulldogs. Car straight back. Throws for the sideline. A lot of pushing. Ball's picked. Intercepted. 
by Steve Williams. Absolute perfect position by Steve Williams. Starting today because he's got the speed at that corner. They were facing the, the great speed from that Fresno State secondary. But as a corner, you want a body position directly in front of the receiver. And Steve Williams puts him in the perfect spot to make the pick. The Bears get the ball back and a chance to score up 26-14. Well, the fog starting to roll in over the top of Candlestick Park here. It's already cold. It's already windy. It's going to get colder and it's going to get windier. For the Cal Bears, though, it's been quite a year, 2010-2011. They were the national champions in men's and women's swimming and diving. The rugby team, of course, won again. They win every Perennial year. Perennial champions. They? Perennial is right. And the conference championships they won in women's volleyball, men's soccer, women's crew, and women's water polo. And how about the baseball team? It went from dead to living large. Absolutely. Almost lost the program this year. The donors brought it back, and they go to the College World Series. I'll tell you how long ago it was. The last time that happened, I was still in school. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. First down, Bears. Made it on the pitch this time. So Fella can not get outside, and he is dropped on a nice tackle by L.J. Jones. Well, Mike, uh, they had film, though. I know that when you played. Yeah, it it's film, exactly. It wasn't video. It was film back then. Against Stanford. That was a big game. 1990. Nice touch on that ball, too, Mike. That is one good-looking quarterback, Barry. <laughs> a little unorthodox, but tough. You can swing it. I know that. <laughs> I, I did a lot of your games. Dawkins was on the receiving end of that one. Yeah, we had some, we had some talented players back in that team. Keenan Allen on the reception here. Speaking of great true freshmen. Both Sean Dawkins and Keenan Allen. Roughing the passer, defense number 53, unnecessary roughness. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Kyle Knox is the guilty party. Here's a look. Oh, yeah, that's. <laughs> he, he didn't put his hands up, so he wasn't going to tackle him. But the officials do happen to see it when you throw the shoulder. And he could have stopped. He, yeah, he might as well have just thrown his forearm shiver and gotten it over yeah. with. Yeah. Well, the Bears really, remember the first quarter, they had 22 plays and 226 yards of offense. Since that time, they've run 20 plays for 86 yards and a host of penalties. But they did score the last time. And it's straight back again. Now he rules out. Now he's got room. And they'll get it out of bounds to the 40-yard line for plus three. And exactly what Jeff Tedford talked to us about yesterday, having a guy that can create with his legs when you get in trouble. If, if you lose on a play by design, he can make something up out of scratch. And now you're looking at second and seven rather than second and 14. So a nice bonus to have at that quarterback position. And Jones is leaving. We don't know why, but I know uh, our intrepid reporter, Dan Dibley, will be right on that. Fake the reverse this time, give it to Cefeli, and Cefeli gets it ahead for about three yards. Cefeli, incidentally, now with 84 yards, that is a career high for him. And the Cal Bears will make their season debut at AT&T Park on Saturday, September 17th at 2.30 p.m. when they host Presbyterian College. Call 800 go Bears or log on to calbears.com to get your tickets today. Presbyterian College in South Carolina, small school, 1,200 enrollment. Remember the Big South Conference. Maynard with all day this time. Now he rolls away from pressure again. And now he's in big trouble. Finally throws it away. And a smart move, using his feet, trying to create something. Gets outside the pocket and throws the ball away. But it'll bring about a fourth down, so the Bears will have to give it back to the Bulldogs, who are still hanging around here. But that's how you want to see a quarterback manage the game. Don't try to force anything. You know, oftentimes, last couple of years, when Cal quarterbacks would get in trouble, they'd throw an interception. they try to force something. This time, Maynard able to use his feet to get outside, buy some time. It wasn't there. He makes a smart decision. I was just going to say, what he is showing me is the fact that he is a good decision maker. Here's Anger's punt, and he really sticks this one. 
Wiley at about the 12 yard line. And Wiley gets a step, gets it ahead across the 20 to about the 22 yard line. 44 yard punt and a 10 yard return by Wiley. We'll jump away, 550 remaining. Here's Maynard. We're coming back. Comcast Sportsnet, California. Carr straight back on first down. Throws, got a man. It's caught this time by Harper. A pickup of about seven to the 30-yard line. You know, you watch that promo and the guy's taking their shirt off after they score the goal. I bet if they played at the stick, they wouldn't take their shirt no, off. No, they'd be way worth, too cold. You got to play in parkas. It's really hard. Mark Anthony on the outside. See him holding his arm in. Took a big shot, a big downfield block on that last play. Stephen McClure, freshman, talented freshman, replaces him. Quick toss this time to Evans, and Evans with absolutely no place to go. Yeah, and dancing as the blue shirts begin to swarm yeah. is not the way to gain yards. DJ Campbell, first man to him, and the Bears really had that well defended. Anthony incidentally back in the ball game now. So it'll be third down and about four. The Bears going with that nickel look, Barry, where they bring in two down linemen and play outside backers off the outside for the rush. Car straight back again. It has the ball swatted out of his hands. The ball is loose. It's picked up this time by Guy for a California touchdown. Yeah, Cecil Whiteside, I talked about that look, the two outside linebackers. Cecil Whiteside playing that left side or strong side outside backer, came in, got his hand and tipped it out of Carr's hand for the turnover. Again, a different look from that defensive front. Nancy Pendergraft with just so many different looks. Whiteside coming from right here. You see him get the upfield rush, and he gets the hand out and knocks it out of Carr's hand. Very heady play with a blocker on him. He still creates the turnover and a well-designed defense. It really was. Tavecchio tries to add the extra point, and he gets it through. Just, Wasn't pretty, but he got it through. Just through. Trevor Guyton with the touchdown for the Bears. And, you know, we can't say enough about the California defense. I mean, they've they've given up two scores. Actually, one was a was a defensive touchdown for Fresno, and the other on a short field, 16 yards. And that was it. The Bears' offense really gave up the touchdowns. You know, it's a very short field. We talked to Clancy yesterday. We said, "Well, what are your expectations?" And almost straight face, he said, "Well, we'd like for them not to score." Yeah. I mean, that was, that's the idea. Yeah, that's the concept. Oh, yeah. okay, coach. Good to see you're setting realistic expectations. But they're very good. Last year, number one in the conference, top in the conference in pass defense. They're very active. You know, he told us we're not a defense that likes to stand still. He wants to bring people. He's going to use pressure. He's got the speed on that in that defensive secondary, speed at linebacker, and he's got some real studs on that defensive line. They can be very, very good this season. Yeah, I think that's one of the things. We talked about this, and I, I really believe that this is going to be a California team that, unlike some recent teams, doesn't have to score 40 points to win a game. I think they'll be able to win games with 21, 24 points. Yeah, yeah, this defense could be very good all year long. They've got depth. That's one thing that the defenses have, have missed here. They have depth on that defensive front. And Clancy is, is very creative. He said, look, when we get guys that play that pro-style offense, that's right in my wheelhouse. I get that. I can run that stuff. But then we get the gun, we get pistol, we get spread, we get all of you know, wishbone one week, we get all these different things. And he's found a way to put it together for a college system and said it made him a better coach overall. But you look at it, 319 yards per game, number one in the Pac-10 last season. 2.8 sacks per game, also number one. 187 yards passing, also number one. And great third down conversions at 35%. So put together a great defense last year in his first year. And now his players are actually starting to coach each other, which means they understand the system so well that they can start to teach the younger players, and that makes a huge difference. This defense stands to be very, very good this season. I think so, too. I think maybe better than last season. And last season, as you said, they led the conference. Here's Borst running up, taking a short kick at about the 18-yard line, the 20 to the 30. Gets to about the 35-yard line, so... 
pretty good field position for the Bulldogs here. And they're going to have to start producing offensively here. Well, they have to get that rhythm. You know, I talked about it when they came back out. You want to get Derek Carr as a young quarterback into a rhythm, find him something where he's comfortable. And they've really, the play calling has been sporadic. And I think that's because guys have been dropping passes. And so Coach Pat Hill, they just keep going back to that screen play. And they keep going back to the short stuff. I think you need to start throwing some intermediate routes for him. So they come in the eye formation this time. Now they bring the tight end Skidmore up on the line of scrimmage. Long count for Carr. And they give the Rouse. Rouse try to get it to the outside. And that's one of the things about the Bears. They move great laterally. And they just would not allow Rouse to get outside. And a flag comes in late. But you saw on that defensive line, we talked about the depth. V. Moalia. Viliami Moala, who came out of Grant High School in Sacramento. Holding. Offense, number 84, 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. True freshman, six foot two, 350 pounds, and will be a force on that defensive line. Yeah, 350 and he moves, yeah. moves well. Coach Pat Hill trying to find an answer for that offense right now. Empty backfield this time for Carr, first and 20. Carr steps up, and that was almost picked by Kendricks. And again, a little bit behind his receiver, Isaiah Burse, but Burse still has to make that catch. Burse, a former quarterback himself from Modesto Christian. That ball's in his hands. You have to make that catch, and Kendricks from that linebacker position covering the flat. There is David Carr, the brother of Derek Carr, who's been trying to counsel his brother all game long. Second down and 20. Carr straight back in trouble. Has to step away and is dropped. Josh Hill makes the play, and the Bears have really stepped it up defensively. A big push by Brennan Scarlett, too. Another of the talented freshmen. So many good young players. I mean, Speed Scarlett coming up field, and Josh Hill closing the gap. So much of this defensive system about forcing a quarterback into the teeth of the defense. You want him to roll one way. You want to force him into a hole. And Josh Hill in position when Carr forced to flush left in position to make the sack. Third down, 24. And now flag. Delay of game. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Now that's one you would expect from a young quarterback in the first game. Coach Hill, not very happy about it. The first thing you do as a quarterback when you come into a new stadium is you find the 25 second clock. You figure out exactly where that is and you know that you have to keep your eye on that so that you can run the offense. So now it's third and 29. Catch is made this time on the outside by Saunders. He's going to be dragged down well short of the first down at the 33-yard line by Steve Williams. And the Bulldogs will have to give it back to the Bears. Keenan Allen now the deep man to receive this punt. And Keenan Allen is special when he gets the ball in open field. He just has an ability and a fluid nature to the way he moves that he can set people up. You know, it's that old dead leg move that you see on guys. He, he just has the ability to, to stop and go very smoothly. This kick is short. Allen's not going to get a chance here. It lands at about the 38-yard line, kicks the other way, and is finally down by Fresno State at about the 42. Only a 26-yard punt that time for Shapiro. Keenan Allen was out there, incidentally, because Jones went off earlier. chance 
in place of Marvin Jones to see Michael Calvin, who's the guy that the Bears have been looking at. They want to see him show up. They want, they've got some young talent out there. They've got Coleman Edmond. They've got Michael Calvin. Just They've got some speed that wide receiver spot. Give us to Cefale, and Cefale will stop right now. They might give him forward progress back to the line of scrimmage. But again, Jeremiah Toma, who's had a very nice game for Fresno State, is there to meet him. Just keeps finding a way to show up at the point of attack, which is what you want from your linebackers. Toma, not very big, 6'1", 215. See Michael Calvin, an absolute burner at that receiver position. Signi been... Significantly, though, we've not seen Marvin Jones come no, back. We have not seen him come back out of the locker room. And... So it's game one, I'm sure that they're being, they're taking every precaution. Maynard this time throws over the middle, incomplete. Tended for the tight end, Hagen. Well covered that time. Maynard threw it up so that his man could go get it if anybody was going to get it. But Dennis and Smith, both there defending for Fresno State. Maynard stepping up, stepping up, feeling that pocket kind of shrink on him. A little old throwback jump pass and delivered a very nice ball. That was right where that ball had to be for it to be a catch. One of those quarterback rules that you learn early on is never throw down the middle late. You only get away with it versus man, but if there's a safety back there, you get in trouble. Made it again, hit as he throws, and that affected that pass <laughs> more than a little bit. Yes. Harrell was coming hard and had Maynard wrapped up as he threw. Pass ended up looking like a punt. <laughs> So the Bears will give it back to the Bulldogs with 103 left here in the third quarter. It was an interesting little exchange of downs there between the two teams, wasn't it? Yeah. Both it was. teams just a little out of sync, just uh -huh. a step off. Yeah, this game is really being played like a first game. I, w I would guess that both these teams will make steady improvement. And I think Cal has done some very good things, especially defensively and anger. Again, takes a few steps running and then kicks it and gets as much as he can out of it. It's going to go dead at the 20-yard line, a 38-yard punt by Brian Angle. That rugby-style punt came into fashion a couple years ago in the NC2A. Let's go down to Dan Dibley, who's got a special guest. Dibs? Yeah, thanks, Barry. It gets no more special than Jim Cozumore. Jim, what are you doing out here today? <laughs> well, you know, I can't help but want to come to a great college football here in the Bay Area. It's always great to come out and see Cal Bears team, and even the Central Valley. I love all our Fresno people out there. Fresno State doing a good job of representing. It's good that you can come out and represent the Valley. I know they've got the green V on the back of the helmet. Having been in the Valley, how prideful are they of their Fresno State squad? Oh, very much so. You can just tell by the way they travel and they come out and support the club so well. I mean, that's really fun to see. I think it's just great for the entire Northern California region, and I include the Central Valley in what they do with sports. You are probably the busiest guy in local media doing all the anchoring and the Chronicle Lives, and you got something else coming up in football season, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Raiders post game live. It'll be the third season for us over on Comcast Sports in California, Dan. We're looking forward to a great season. It's always fun, and more and more fans are starting to make that switch. As soon as the Raider game is over, make that switch from the game, including the opener on Monday night in Denver. Denver, go to Comcast Sportsnet California. We'll have all the reaction. We'll go live back to Denver. We'll get all the sound. So we're ready to go for an NFL season, and we want you to join us on Raiders Post Game Live. We'll enjoy this football, and I'll see you for the Quakes football this Saturday. Yes, I was all lined up. They had too many lines on the field. I wasn't used to this stuff, Dan. We'll and, see you. We'll see you another one. Too. Oh, yeah, that's right. A little confused down here, Barry, but we're trying to work our way through. Uh, you two guys are walking promos. I like that. Thank you. I love it. Jim Cozumore, former mayor of Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> now moving out to the East Bay. Yeah, now he's a neighbor of Mike's. All right, we're going to jump off the track and uh, we run to the end of the third quarter. It's a 33 to 14 ball game. The Bears over the Bulldogs. We'll be back. We come to the fourth period and the fog comes to Candlestick Park. 33 to 14, the Bears over the Bulldogs. Great defensive performance so far for the California Golden Bears. Offensively, it's been an on again, off again sort of day. But it's a first game. And a mix up again in pass. No, no choice but to just go down. Speaking of the first game, Wiley ran right into him. 
I am fairly certain that that is not how they drew that up Probably on the chalkboard. Not. Probably not. Obviously, Wiley was supposed to be able to clear through there, or he was supposed to get the football on a receiver fly. But miscommunication, and that's been kind of the hallmark of this offense so far this game for Fresno State. Drop passes, miscommunications, little things that end up being big things in the end. Second down now and 18. Seems it's been second and 18 all day for David Carr. <laughs> Steps up, throws over the middle, incomplete. That time the protection held up, but good coverage by the Bears. Saunders, the intended receiver, and Williams got him turned around. And Carr, you know, as he steps up, he's got his receiver. He sees him here, but he delivers a ball over the outside. You know, again, he just pulled it. You see him at the end when they kind of short arm things. It's a quarterback pulling the string on it. You need to put air underneath that ball. If you've got a fast guy out there, throw it for the fast guy and let him run. See the numbers on third down conversion. Just one of nine for Fresno, and they're looking at a third and 18 now. place to go. First man to him was Wilkerson. Just got a fingertip on him. And this guy's going to be a player for the Bears. Just a freshman. Yeah, Wilkerson, very good. Great instincts. But he finds a way on the inside. Flushing car back into Michael Kendricks. And those are two guys that you don't want to be trapped between. Absolutely. Brings on a punting unit once again. Bears will get good field position here. Shapiro will punt it away. Keenan Allen stands at the 45-yard line. High twisting kick. Allen fair catch. Doesn't make it. Did get a hand on the ball, and I think this he, should go to Fresno State if Allen touched it. Did he touch that ball? So the official's ruling yes. Now they're saying California ball. So they're saying he did not touch the ball. So the Bears catching a bit of a break here, I think. Yeah. They'll have it, and they'll have it in good field position when we come back. Well, we believe Pat Hill has asked for a review on that last play, and uh, the replays that we saw will say that it should be cow ball. Watch this. From this angle, it looks close. It looks like... Maybe Keenan Allen touches that ball, but when you change the angle, you can see separation between his hand and the ball. The ball reverses direction when it hits the ground. But right there, there's air between hand and ball. Yep. So that's a great call by the official on such a bang-bang play where that ball hits and either it hit his hand or it didn't. But both the officials right there ruled Cal ball, and it was a good call. Yeah, and apparently Pat has decided not to challenge that call. As the Bears offense on the field, and we appear to be ready to go. The ball is at the 47-yard line. Bears lead it 33-14. to 14. Yeah. So Fowler comes in motion. Maynard, pump fake. Now he throws deep. Got a man wide open, and he missed him. Oh. It was intended for... Dabowski Johnson. And this play was stealing real quickly. Easy to drop. Dabowski Johnson heading out. He's faking the block on that receiver screen that we've seen so many times. Everybody on that Fresno State defense bites on it. And Maynard just knew he overthrew it just a little bit. With running backs, you have to be more accurate. They can't change speed when the ball's in the air like receivers do. So you have to put that ball on him and just missed it. But that was easy six points. Speaking of receivers, Marvin uh, Jones is back in the ball game. So that bodes well for the Cal Bears. <laughs> Here's Keenan Allen trying to make something out of nothing. <laughs> he gets thrown out of bounds. He ran into Dominic Gallus' center. Ended up losing yards on the play, but even at that, electrifying when he touches the ball. Yes. And, and Gal is trying to come over and make a play for him. He's having a rough day today. Keenan Allen turning back inside. Gal is going to pick up a block on one of the big guys. <laughs> but instead, he becomes the bumper for the pinball of Keenan Allen. It all ends in a two-yard loss. But it was exciting. Yeah. 
That's third down and 14 for the Bears. Maynard straight back. He's got time. Now he runs out of time. He's tossed down from behind for a sack. The play made that time. By Donovan Lewis. Good job. You know, we talked about it early on, and we're seeing some of it right now. The offensive lines for these teams, Jeff told us yesterday, it's not up front. It's not when you start the game. That's not football. Football happens when guys are dirty and when guys are tired and when things are happening. You know, Mahalcheck telling us it's, it's when linemen are grinding. That's when you see it. And right now, we're seeing who's showing up and who's not. Anger hits this one, and Wiley takes it about the 11-yard line, trying to get the outside, and Edmund runs him down. And Coleman Edmund, very fast, explosive, wide receiver by nature, and you were not going to beat him to the sideline. 40-yard punt and minus five on the return. Cal Football on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you today by Frosted Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. What a shot as the fog rolls in over the city of San Francisco. I've lived here almost my whole life. And this year seems to be more fog than I can remember seeing for a long time. It's been the coldest summer that I can remember since yeah. I came here first in 1987. Car gives straight ahead this time. Rouse unable to get much, maybe a yard. This is where the depth of the California defense as Moana makes the stop there really started to show. I mean, you look and you are nine guys deep on that defensive front that can all play. Not like nine guys, you got some guys that can fill some time. Nine players that can all play, so, which means you're always going to face a fresh defensive line from the Bears when you face them this year. It's, it's truly the strength of this team, this defensive team. Big factor. Stop. Ellis comes in motion to the far side, the near side of the field. Far straight back, has it batted in the air. It came right back down into the Rooster's hands. If he caught it, it was going to be a touchdown. And he made the tip going up first, getting that big paw up. You know, they teach these defensive linemen, if you can't make the play on the quarterback, then try to make the tip on the play. And Owusu getting in the passing lane, sees Carr go for the pass, and he gets that big left paw up. And the ball came down right at his feet. <laughs> He was celebrating the tip. He didn't know how close he was to catching a pass. Right. And again, getting third, an interception. Third long once again for Derek Carr. You got to start to feel for him. Only one of ten in third down conversions. This one's not going to happen either. Catch made by Burst coming out of the backfield and nothing to it. Josh Hill on the stop for the Bears. That defense just looking very, very good. You know, we haven't really mentioned Katoos back there at safety, who's really the leader on that defense because everybody's making plays up front. They haven't gotten to that level, but everybody is showing up. Absolutely. And they're showing up well for this defense. So Shapiro this time out of his own end zone. Bears should have a very short field once again. Spiro hits this one really well. Keenan Allen midfield. Starts right back up the middle. Gets it back to about the 43-yard line. He wanted more. Zach Hill makes the stop. We'll take a timeout. 10-27 left in the game. Bears with the ball and the lead. 33-14. Here is the update. Derek Carr, 14 
24, 105 yards. He's been under siege most of the afternoon. Robbie Rouse, they've contained him pretty much. Zach Maynard in his first start, 14-29, 247 yards, two touchdowns at the one pick. And Marvin Jones early, all in the first half, five catches, 119 yards. I'm actually a little surprised at Carr's numbers. I thought, you know, with the drop balls and everything else, that he'd be under 50% passing. And a little surprised at Maynard's, I thought he'd be over 50% passing. So the score doesn't tell you the whole story. No, it doesn't. And Jones did have one touchdown here in the second half, so they weren't all in the first half. Here's Sofelli, and he is stopped after a gain of about a yard. Terrence Dennis wrapping him up. And these guys moving so fast and traveling at these angles. Make a nice contact, don't they? I'll say. Got them up here. The face mask really changed the game of football. Yeah. Guys could put their head in the middle of a hit, and it became more of that crunch core style of tackling. C.J. Anderson now the running back for the Bears. On second down and nine. Straight back, throws too tall for Jones. He had him. Let that one get away. It's that same backside seam post we saw him complete earlier in the day. Just got to get your feet underneath you and deliver that ball. You know, one thing quarterbacks do, especially young quarterbacks, is they want to see their ball as it flies. And so as they go to throw, they release it, and all of a sudden their eyes come up to the ball. And your accuracy suffered when that happens. You have to be coached to keep your eyes on your target. Because it's just like a golfer. If you pull your head off early to see your ball flight, it changes your swing path. Same thing with the quarterback. Pull your eyes off early, it changes your throwing motion. So now third and long for Maynard. Straight back, he throws, has a man caught by Allen out of bounds, first down. That one he put on the money. And he was under pressure. That's often times when guys are under pressure. They're focusing on the throw because they know it's coming. They keep their eyes on the target. And you can see it in guys when you watch film. Some of the pictures you see where quarterbacks are throwing and you look at them, their eyes are straight up. That's when they take their eyes off their target. <laughs> Classic pictures. Seven catches, 105 yards now for Allen. So two cow receivers over 100 yards in receptions today. Maynard gonna go up again, throws too tall for the tight end, Anthony Miller. Almost threw him into double coverage, had LJ Jones on that corner, nobody out there to threaten his flat. Jones almost fell underneath it, but Anthony Miller is the guy who's gonna be a real tool for this Cal offense this year. That big tight end spot. You know, a guy 6'4", 260, he can run, he can catch. They like to use him split out like he is now as a wide receiver. He could just be a force out there with his physical presence. Maynard now with five seconds to get the playoff, and they do. Steps up, throws in and out of the hands of Jones. And Jones not gonna miss too many of those. Trying to make the move before he caught the ball. You see him flash his hands up and flash his hands as they came back down. You have to secure that catch first, make that catch, and then bring it back down and make your move. He was trying to make that same move he's made the last couple times where he spins off and gets the extra yards. And remember when it started in the sunshine, these people came prepared. Got to give it up for Fresno's. They know what they're doing. Only a 38 degree difference between what it is in That's Fresno all. right now and what it is in Candlestick Park. Here's a screen this time for Allen. Allen is going to be short of the first down at about the 23-yard line. Is Fresno the actual term? I don't know. I'll tell you. I believe it is, actually. I mean, I, I liked it. I went with it. It is a Fresno. A Fresno. Fresnite. Fresno White. I, I know we'll get a call. These are ardent fans. That's good. I hope somebody knows because I don't. I'm going with Fresno. So Tavecchio to try a 40-yard field goal here. And as we've said it many times, kicking is an adventure at this facility. Tavecchio hits this one pretty good, and he got it. <laughs> the wind held that up. You see that ball just start to slow down, slow down. Thought it was going to bleed all of its forward motion and just drop right before the goalpost. 
So the Bears increased their lead to 22 points. It's a 36 to 14 game as DeVecchio makes good on a 40 yarder. Take another look at it. Seems that no matter which end zone you're in, the wind's blowing against you. Yeah. But it almost lost all of its inertia as it's heading towards the uprights. Tavecchio just happy to get that one home. Well, a reminder to join us next Saturday. We'll have more Cal football. The Golden Bears travel to Colorado. They'll take on the Buffaloes in a non-conference game, despite the fact that Colorado now is a member of the Pac-12. Last season in Berkeley, remember the Bears demolished yeah. the Bobsters on a 52-7 game. It's Colorado, California, and Colorado next Saturday, 12:30, right here on Comcast Sportsnet, California. You never know what the weather's going to be there. That's right. Just like being in Florida, if you don't like the weather, just wait 15 minutes, it'll change That's on you. That's right. Go down to the sidelines to Dan Dibley. Dibs, what do you got? Yeah, Barry, the return man who hasn't really erupted yet for Fresno State, number one, Isaiah Burst, part of a trio of the Sac Joaquin All-Stars from recent days. You talked about Jalen Saunders earlier, played his high school ball at Pleasant Grove up there in Elk Grove for the legendary Butch Catalico. Josh Harper from St. Mary's, a redshirt freshman wide receiver. The future is bright for Fresno State, and we may see Burst get loose before this one's over. He's got some giddy up. And he'll get it here at about the three-yard line. Starts to the right side, gets the 10 to the 15, runs out of room. The 20 slipped to tackle to the 25-30. And now trying to get to the outside, can't quite do it, but a great return, just as you said, Dibs. 33-yard return from Burse. Such a special athlete. Modesto Christian. They, his senior year, they had a hard time finding enough guys to field, actually field a football team, and they went on to the state championship. Well, I'll tell you, they always fielded a basketball team. They had one of the best basketball teams yeah. in the country just about, I'd say, what, five years ago with the Pondexter? Car straight back to pass. Steps up, throws. Skidmore had it slip off his hands. It was almost intercepted, and it ultimately just fell incomplete. About four guys had a chance at that. You watch Carr as he slides forward. Legs moving left, and he kind of sidearms it back across the middle. That was a pinball. Yeah. You throw people into the pile like that, and guys get a little nervous. Skidmore did not want to stick those arms out. <laughs> Looked like a T-Rex going across the middle yes. at the end. Real short. Second and ten now. Carr gives to Rouse right up the middle, and Rouse gets about eight. C.J. Moncrease says the Bears now will play largely a second unit defense, although Clancy Pendergast uh, plays a lot of people defensively, so you can't really say as a first and second unit. Exactly, and, and they're fairly deep, so... Even their second unit, for lack of a better term, is very good. Some of the guys out there now, Stefan McClure, a freshman. Michael Coley, a redshirt freshman. C.J. Moncrease is a senior. Here's Bridgeford, the back of the quarterback. Mike gets some action. They both have their helmets on still. So the question is, who's warming who up? That's right. Here's Rouse again, trying to get the outside does. Midfield to the 45-yard line on the first down. Well, we mentioned earlier that Keenan Allen and Marvin Jones each over 100 yards. It's the first California duo to go over 100 yards in a game since 06 when Deshaun Jackson and Lavelle Hawkins, both now playing in the NFL, did it. Another good duo. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> The good crew, you know, you have the senior and then the young buck who really stepped up last year. It's a nice dynamic. Yeah, it really is. Definitely a strength of the Bears, their wide receiving core. Blitz comes, car throws. Ball's caught this time for a first down by Marcel Jensen to the 30-yard line of California. 
So the Bulldogs not done dancing yet here. And Cameron Jackson, just a high school freshman, out there making the tackle and running right out of his shoe on the play. So we're seeing some of the good young talent as well. I'll tell you, we're seeing a ton of them for California and for Fresno for that matter. But Stefan McClure, we mentioned, he's a freshman. Michael Coley's a retrograde freshman. Moncrease is a senior. Cecil Whiteside, a freshman, is on the field right now. Brendan Scarlett, a freshman, is on the field right now for the Bears. Oh, Carr this time has to throw it away. And J.P. Harrell has shown up a couple times, but right there on the dog from that middle linebacker position, stepped up and absolutely delivered a blow and de one of the Fresno State backs. Second and 10 now for the Bulldogs. Six minutes remaining to be played in the ball game. A lot of this crowd is headed back for the Valley in the 96 degree temperature. This burst on the direct snap and a double reverse to Wiley. Wiley trying to get the outside, 30-25, gets the 20 yard line, cuts it inside of the 15, gets about the 13 yard line. Burst with a nice block, a double reverse. Quick hitting though. Usually yeah. those things yeah. take forever to develop. So you get that hound formation, which is what they call it at Fresno State, the, the Wildcat. And with the quick double handoff inside, nice play design. It really was not a nice block by Burst on Stefan McClure. Really, it was just long enough on the handoff to freeze guys in position so they can get the edge with Wiley. Gain of 17, and the ball now at the 13-yard line. Carr, straight back, throws, got a man, lost. Couldn't quite get the body turned. He made the catch, had a lane to the end zone, but he couldn't get turned around and get the momentum headed in the right direction to get there. Yeah, nice job getting his shoulders around in order to make that catch. If Carr delivers that ball downfield, that's a touchdown. But as a quarterback, if you're not looking inside out, you can feel those jerseys, the defensive jerseys downfield, and sometimes, instinctively, you just tend to throw that ball to the outside. He threw a catchable ball, but had he taken the time to look at the defense to make sure he had it, that would have been a touchdown. And Clancy Pendergast has rushed his first-line defense back onto the field here, second down. And Rouse has stopped immediately. So now it's going to be third down and three for a first down, five for a touchdown. And remember, the two touchdowns that the Bears have given up, really both on the offense yes. for giving up the short field and then for the fumble in the end zone. So although they scored on a one-play run, it was really the offense's fault. And Clancy told us yesterday, we want to keep them from scoring. Yeah. So. He said, we got to play tough on first down. we got to play tough on third down. I don't know if that means he's giving it up on second <laughs> I'm assuming not. It's time to go with a power eye. Two tight ends that bring a man in motion. And Carr's going to throw it. And he's in trouble. And he steps up, finds a little lane, slides down at the five-yard line. Maybe a loss of a half yard on the play. And now it's going to be fourth down. And that was great coverage. Trevor Guyton getting pressure from the backside. Flushing Carr up, up through the middle. But the DBs ran the routes before the Fresno State receivers even made their breaks. They were in perfect position. And that's, that's a coverage play all the way. So the Bulldogs really with no choice but to go here. Again, they need now four for a first down, six for a touchdown. And the Bears blitz up the middle, Carr throws to the end zone, a lot of grabbing, and the catch is made by Harper for the score. Great play. Steve Williams was right there for the play. It was good defense, but the throw behind is one of the toughest passes to defend. And Josh Harper, redshirt freshman wide receiver from St. Mary's in Stockton, has been doing this for a long time. I got to see him play in high school, and he was one of those guys that was just a man amongst boys out there, making the one-handed catches and great body control. 
He goes up and shows he can do it at this level as well. And his, of course, his dad played right on this very field yeah. with the San Francisco 49ers. Willie Harper, star as a collegian, and played very well in the NFL also. 36-21. perform highlight and there were a lot of for the Bears today most of them on the defense but a number on the offense as well yeah Keenan Allen on the corner route brother to brother for the hookup and then Marvin Jones coming back on the out for the first down and then the second down Marvin Jones spin on the sideline and ending up in the paint receivers showing up for the Bears so far today. And look at the numbers for Maynard, 16 of 34, more than a representative first game for him, 266 yards. A couple of touchdowns and the one pick, Marvin Jones, five for 119. Keenan Allen, eight catches, 112, that's 131 of the, two, or 231 of the 266 yards that Maynard completed passes for to his brother and his brother's friend. <laughs> and you notice the brothers both going with that mountain man look. A little bit of the beard action coming in style. I wish I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Kendricks, star of this defensive team, but also out there on special teams right now, a part of that hands unit. Bears anticipating an onside kick here, and I would say very good chance they'll get one. They do. The Bears will handle it at the 41-yard line. There was Keenan Allen who handled it and handled it rather easily. And that's why you put Michael Kendricks up on that front line. He's not there to catch that ball. As a linebacker, he's there to deliver a blow and protect the receiver. Well, which is something, of course, that, that uh, Utah State did not do against Auburn today. That was a very winnable game for, the, for them. And on an onside kick, it was the easiest onside kick yep. I've ever seen. And Auburn went on to score 10, well, 14 points in the last three minutes and beat Utah State when they had the game won. Special teams, so very important, especially when it gets tight. So first down for the Bears, the 41-yard line to give us to Safele, and he didn't get in. Logan Harrell on the stop. Well, coming up for the Cal Bears, we'll be with them again next week in Boulder as they take on the Colorado Buffalo, and then it's Presbyterian College in the game at AT&T, and then it gets serious, Washington, on the 24th, Oregon on Thursday night, October 6th, nationally televised game, <laughs> and then SC, back-to-back -back Oregon and SC. That's not easy. That's, yeah, no, that's a tough run right there. <laughs> USC struggled a bit at home today with Minnesota. They did win 19-17. There's a pitch to Safeli. Safeli takes it to the outside this time, and then is dropped as he crossed the 40-yard line. It's about the 38. Picked up about two. Terrence Dennis makes the stop. The Bears happy to run some time off the clock if they can. Timeout is called with 2.33 remaining. You see Coach Ron Gould, running backs coach, who's been here, the only coach that stayed over when Jeff Tedford took the job, and he's been so instrumental with this Cal team. And you've seen the running backs that have come here from so J.J. Arrington, Marshawn Lynch, Justin Forsett, Javid Best. Yeah, pretty good running backs. What a legacy. Yeah, I mean, fantastic legacy. Starting with Igbert. That's right. Remember Joe Igbert? Another great back. Tough I mean, guy. Very good, very quick side to side. Get used to liking him to Barry Sanders. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that is a good, <laughs> I mean, the whole crew of running backs. So Cephalia, some big shoes to fill out here. I'll say, there's his numbers for today. 24 carries, 88 yards, that's a career high. A couple of touchdowns. And he's carried most of the load. A few snaps for Govan Davosky Johnson, and a few more for C.J. Anderson, that's about it. Empty backfield this time, Maynard misses Jones. Shane Vereen, of course, uh, came out, I think that did kind of catch 
the coaching staff a little bit by surprise, but a high draft choice for the Philadelphia Eagles, and he's going to play. And he was a huge factor, needless to say, last year. But not just carrying the ball. We just saw he could catch the ball. He was great out of the backfield. He was truly an all-purpose back. And, you know, we talked about John the Best when he was there because John the Best so explosive. But he was almost as fast as Javid Best, and he was, I think, a better runner between the tackles. Flag falls here. It's going to back the Bears up. False start. Offense, number seven. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. And here were uh, California's draft picks last year. Cameron Jordan, of course, a number one choice of the New Orleans Saints. Shane Vereen went in the second round to New England. I said Philadelphia, New England. Chris Conte, a second round pick to Chicago. And you think you lose somebody like Cam Jordan off that defensive line, and it would get worse. But with all the young talent coming in, they're much deeper than they were. Yeah, I think Cal is going to live and die on the defense this year. And I think it's going to be a defense that should keep them in most games. Oh, no question. You know, the old saying, defense wins championships. We talk about another Fresno State alum, Trent Dilfer, back with Baltimore. Their offense was serviceable, but the defense was fantastic. And it took them to a Super Bowl. And with Brian Anger, one of the best punters in the country, too, if, if Cal does get in a field position game, they're in pretty good, pretty good shape. You're one of those, you let your offense grow while your defense does the lion's share of the work. But that's a good position to be in when you have a young offense. And remember Maynard's first start. Had to be a case of nerves here today. And for the most part, he performed well. I missed a few things that later on in the season he probably won't. But by and large, I give him a C plus. Yeah, I thought I thought he showed up good. You know, the, the quick throws, I think, eluded him today, getting his seat, uh, feet set. Uh, too quick, missing on throws, missing behind guys. So the accuracy suffers, but once you watch game film, as a quarterback, you realize, okay, I can correct that with these steps. And, you know, he'll be coached hard. One thing Jeff Tedford does with everything he does. False start. Offense, number 11. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Is whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, he's always trying to figure out a way to make it better. You could run a new drill and run it better than it's ever been run before. And the first thing Jeff will say is, okay, how do we make it better? Yeah. And, and he's focusing on perfection, which is what you have to do. I remember Zach talking to us yesterday about how much he's learned from Jeff Tedford. And, and this is the guy that's not coming in there out of high school. As you said earlier, he was a starter for a year at Buffalo before transferring to Cal. So, you know, he didn't just fall off the turnip truck. And he says he's learned more from Jeff Tedford in the time that he's been at Cal and he hasn't collectively since he's been a quarterback. And D.J. Holt was teaching a little lesson across the middle himself. Yes, he was. Ow. Evans on the crossing route. Meet D.J. Holt. And that was unfriendly. Yes. Third down and ten. The pass is caught this time by Harper, but it's going to be short of the first down. I think there's an important lesson in there, for Evans, and that is sit down versus zone. Yeah. <laughs> Man routes, you run away versus zone, you want to sit down because there's going to be somebody angry on the far side. Well, it's fourth down, but the Bulldogs will go with 37 seconds remaining in the game. Quick toss this time, and that's not going to happen. Burst is stopped all the way back at the 13-yard line. D.J. Holt right there once again for the Bears, and the Bears will take over with 32 seconds left. They don't really have to do anything. They can take a couple of knees. Yeah, we talked about Michael Kendrick so much. D.J. Holt actually dropped about 15 pounds this year, and so he's gained a lot of speed back by playing lighter. Well, the Bears, I mean, they're really tough on the inside. Yeah, they're very good. I mean, we've talked about the defensive line linebacker, also a big strength. DB, also a big strength. So th there's not a weak spot on that defense. And I love Pendergrass' style of defensive coordinating. The way he runs his defense, he keeps you guessing, and he's always coming at you from a different angle. Absolutely. And great depth. You know, I mean, that all of that, when you put it together, it can constitutes a pretty darn good defensive right. team. Absolutely. Very good. Good tools. And here's two old friends coming out to shake hands. These guys coach together. 
Well, it's not going to get any easier for either one of these guys as Jeff Tedford has to go back to Boulder. They're licking their wounds off a 52-7 to loss to Cal last year. And Pat Hill, talk about uh, out of the frying pan into the fire. He's yes. got to go back to Lincoln and play Nebraska. That's a tough one. Yeah, but both these guys have to refocus, get this first game behind them, and what they're really going to have to do is clean up the mistakes they made, the bobbles, the, the missed snaps, the misreads. Clean all that up because this week coming up, it's going to be tough on both sides. All right, let's go down to the field. Dan Dibley is with Zach Maynard. Dibs. Thanks a lot, Barry. Zach, how's it feel after your first game as Cal quarterback? Feels great. I'm um, going to win on our belt the first game. I play against a great opponent, Fresno State, a good team. Uh, a lot of mental errors today. We got to wash it up. A lot of good film to watch. We did good, good job there. Did it take you a little bit to kind of get settled in, realizing that you are now the quarterback of California? Yeah, uh, I ain't got hit in a long time, so today was a good experience for me. Uh, we did well today. Um, it took a lot of a lot out of us in the first half. We had a couple mishaps, you know, but uh, we did well. How comforting is it to be able to throw to your good friend Brendan Allen, or Keenan Allen, rather? Yeah, my brother is it's like second nature, like throwing in the backyard. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dips, thanks very much, and thanks to Zach Maynard. Uh, a good day for him, a good first day, and his team puts one in the W column, and that's really the bottom line. And he was telling us earlier now he's going to go back with Keenan Allen and all the other Carolina guys, and they're going to play Mortal Kombat. That's, that's right. They do. That's their big thing, video games hanging out. But, you know, he showed up well at times here tonight, and what that tells you is the guy's got the tools to do it. There were some young mistakes, and like he said, he hasn't seen live fire in a couple of years, so it takes a while to shake some of that rust off. That's what the film room's about. But coming out here on the field, he showed that he can do it. He can do it under pressure. And the one point that won him that starting job, the legs, really showed up today. The, his ability to escape the pocket and to make something happen under pressure really showed up today. Yeah, you know, the other thing I like about him, I like his decision making. I mean, the, yeah, there were some mistakes out there today, but he seems to have a very good sense of when do I pull it down or when do I try to go to the second or third guy. Yeah, you can always correct the physical, and his errors were physical today. The mental stuff is when you really start to worry, and he showed that mentally he was very strong. Physically, they'll make that stuff, they'll clean it up, but he'll come back a better quarterback next week. Yeah, that's what I think, too, but the real story for me for California, not only today, but I think for the season, is their defense. It's a good defensive team. They are going to be very solid. If they look to win a championship in the Pac-12, it's going to be with that defense. What a reminder to join us next Saturday on CSN California for more Cal football as the Golden Bears travel to Colorado to take on the Buffs. We start at 1230 for more information, including upcoming schedules and events. All you have to do is log on to our website, CSNCalifornia.com. For our producer, Dave Feldman, our director, Mark Wilson, and my partners, Mike Pulaski and Dan Dibley. I'm Barry Tompkins. That's a wrap for us. So long from Candlestick Park.